What is up, everyone, and welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast, which is brought to you by Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. And you can check them out at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com as well as on Instagram, Facebook, and on a lot of people's heads. Check them out. Lexan Moto has an intercom system for you. The all-new Lexan G16 is the group rider's long-awaited answer to an affordable intercom system. With a 16 rider comm system, Bluetooth 5.0, and music sharing, it'll keep your group connected while traveling together. This is another great product from the Lexan team geared at making motorcycle rides and travel more enjoyable. Check it all out at lexan-moto.com where you can apply the Fast Life offer code and save yourself 15% off. And give them a follow on Instagram at lexanmoto. Thundermax has your EFI equipped Harley Davidson covered with their high quality auto tuning ECMs. I have been running their computer on my road glide for over 40,000 miles and it continues to give me the optimal performance out of my engine. Paired with a touring oil cooler fan, my bike has been running strong and at a desirable temperature. You can check out these products at shoptmax.com and use offer code FASTLIFE to save yourself 10% off. And as always, give these guys a follow on Instagram at ThundermaxEFI. I switched all my lighting on my Rogue Glide to Electric Lighting Co. I'm a huge fan of their looks and their improved visibility I get from the Shark Tooth Headlight. And I'm digging the five year warranty on the 15 different LED headlight options they have for your motorcycle. Their deluxe and premium LED turn signals offer 530 lumens of bright white running light, which are the, be- the brightest in the industry and have a lifetime warranty. And last but not least, the LED tail lamps come in a wide range of design to add that finishing touch and all products are plug and play. NAMS custom cycle products since 1999 have been offering American made wiring products for all things V-Twin and Badlands for over 30 years have been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com and you can drop the FL2020 offer code which gives you free shipping on orders over $100. Check them out. John Jessup's Team Dream Rides out of Stockton, California is a one-stop shop for you to have your motorcycle customized, maintained, repaired, and upgraded. With in-house dyno tuning and parts and accessories, also check out teamdreamrides.com online store to see the full array of products for your bike and you as a rider. And if you're short on cash, you can take advantage of the 100 days same as cash financing on all products. TeamDreamRides.com, all you need is a job and a bank account. And while you're at it, give John and the team a follow on Instagram at DreamRidesJohn. Paint Huffer Metal Flake has been with our podcast since day one, and I've been using their flakes and pearls in my paint work for over four years now. You can get started down this custom paint path with many must-have items in the custom paint process at PaintHuffer.com. And you can save yourself some coin by using the Fast Life 25 offer code. And last but not least, you can get a lot of inspiration by checking out all the amazing paint work created with Paint Huffer products at Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Uh, great show for you today with Brian from Clem Speed Shop. We have been trying to do this podcast for a couple of years now, and I had to chase him down to New York City to make it happen. Uh, had a good time, though. New York was a badass time it was it's the last stop of this trip that we did to milwaukee to michigan and then to new york um i really love that city man i can't wait to go back and meet more people and the the people i did meet there were fucking awesome um man i I don't really i i don't know what else to say about it it's a badass city if you live there you're lucky to have such a cool place except for right now when it's probably snowing and shit so anyway good times let's get into this podcast here we go hey guys you ready to let the dogs out Like you get an interjection from the back, and then it's like it doesn't. The microphones won't ever pick it up, and well, you don't want to like ruin everybody's fun because you're we're all here kind of like having a vacation. Yep. Yeah. You know, and so it gets real hard to try to wrangle people up to do. Uh, you know, this is kind of like business for me, obviously, and it's also a good thing for uh, Clem Speed Shop here to kind of talk about their. Uh, 
Their humble beginnings. My job. <laughs> My job. <laughs> Out of Detroit. So what's up, man? We've been we've been dancing around this fucking thing for a minute now. It has been. It's been what uh two years in a row now trying to do this or a year or so yeah i dropped my bike last time we were trying to do it and i think i was like so pissed off about that that i was like you left not. i was like fuck you guys i'm out you know <laughs> got up and left yeah we we picked shitty houses to stay in i guess this one's dope man yeah we got lucky on this yeah that one time in sturgis for, I mean, that was a rocky driveway man yeah i just dropped my bike and then i was like steve just just do it for me. <laughs> pick it up and bring it over <laughs> here come on up. man all right, we're out. Yeah, we had uh, Joe had fun, you know, kind of dirt biking his bike throughout the neighborhood over there. So it was, yeah. it was good times. Uh, so are you are you originally from here, Detroit? No, are you always? I'm Detroit, hundred percent. Yeah. I What's just, the connection to New York? Why has it been such a, a strong like pull back over here all the time? Uh, the Indian Larry thing, really. Uh, I, I mean, I started out kind of like doing the chopper thing. Um, so there was a handful of guys back home that I got linked up with, with the choppers and, uh, we started going out to the block party mm -hmm. and I've literally been coming out here for a really long time. You said 16 years, right? That you've been doing it? No, it started 16 years. Ago. Yeah. The block party. This is the, it's when he died, right? this is the 17, actually the year after he passed away, uh, or I'm sorry, the year before he passed away is when it started. This is the 17th year. Uh, this is probably, man, this is probably like Eighth. 10 years for me now. For real? Yeah. And then I've been doing the Aiden ride um, after that. So I've been coming out here probably like two or three times a year. Damn. Try to. L lately it's been a little tough, but I, we try to come out here like two or three times a year. Yeah. But yeah, it kind of just started like with the... Choppers and Indian Larry and Fab Kevin and a bunch of the guys back home in Detroit and we just you know like I said been coming out here ever since. Yeah, I've always wanted to come to the Indian Larry Park, and, and it's like the Brooklyn Invitational is right around the same time too. They don't do it anymore. They, they used to, and actually, like for me, I thought it was actually a good thing, man. You had the you had the guys for, from Indian Larry, and you had like the Brooklyn Invitational, which was kind of two separate kind of bike deals but they were in the same neighborhood so like this city was crazy with bikes when both of them were going on at the same time yeah. it was it was pretty nuts the phone yeah it starts picking up I all the cooking. <laughs> but yo that's that's what I, I mean i uh i mean i knew the invent i mean the fucking trip and the um indian larry block party you always see it it's kind of like the sema right yeah. You, you you if you don't go then all you you start seeing this flood of pictures on social media and you're like fuck man the, another year the big case of the FOMOs you know well, yeah that's, that's, yep. it's so hard to like you know come up and do every event out there and everything you're a strong voice man go deep voice yeah but yeah do all these events and try to you know put them all together and it's like you know some of them are so close but then they're so far away and Everything. And, and like I said too, the the invitational was cool. Like some of the bikes and the scene and stuff like that really wasn't like what I was into at the time or whatever, or even now. But it was still just cool to have, you know, basically at that time Brooklyn just filled with bikes. Didn't matter if it was choppers, Dynas, FXRs, baggers, piece of shit scooters. It didn't matter. Like yeah. it was just the the whole city was just packed full of bikes. So it was one of those things where. It, it was a cool weekend to go to just to see as many bikes in one small area as So possible. was the Invitational more like one of those like super trendy kind of hipstery kind the, of things? The first couple times, it, the first like two years, it wasn't that bad. But then it kind of got a little worse, a little worse. And yeah, it was like at one point we would walk down there from the block party, which was only a couple blocks away. There'd be, you know, a two block or a three block line to get in. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was just like, dude, at that point, it, you know, it got yeah. out of control, you know, for, for me at least. It wasn't my scene at that point. That's what it's like for in Texas. We have the hand-built show, and I feel like that, you know, amazing craftsmanship there, but it's it doesn't really have that biker feel when you're down there. You know, the, the thing was is, like, the bikes were in, like, a cool building, but, like, you know, they had no lights. There was people all over the place. So, like, for myself, I want to go check out bikes and see what people are doing. You couldn't even get within, like, 10 or 15 feet of a bike, let mm -hmm. alone get a good picture of it, you know. So 
for me it just wasn't it, it kind of got you know I like the party, but that was a whole different kind of party for yeah, me. Yeah, that know? was like a fucking uh, martini party. Yes. Right there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's cool, man. Like I said, man, it's like it's it's kind of crazy being up here and just uh, this city's fucking. Um, I remember the first, like obviously it's my first time being yeah. here, and as we're, me and Steve were driving through, uh, you know, New Jersey, you know, it's so hilly, which I didn't even, I never thought that. I felt like it was flat up here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just that's just the perceived notion that i had i never had anything to compare it to because i've never been up here and so when you're riding through new jersey you're kind of cutting around little fucking you know hills or small mountains or whatever you want to say and then like all of a sudden you see the first like peaks of some of the yep, skyscrapers yep. in town it's like fuck dude for for us it's um it's like 650 miles from detroit to brooklyn queens area and yeah like as soon as you get into that Jersey spot and I like can picture it every time come around 95 and all of a sudden you see like the New York you know yeah. skyline dude it's 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 a whole different thing man it puts it's just a it's a completely different you know vibe once you get past Jersey and get closer to the city man what's crazy it's like they're still building skyscrapers I saw a couple like like up like being constructed oh, yeah. and then it's like you see the uh the way we were originally coming, I remember I was we were stopped. And I said, "Exit right here." Yeah. Because it's it, you know, like I said on the Google Maps, while you're trying to like like navigate it, I wanted to. It was taking us around the city, so we wouldn't even have been on Manhattan uh, Island at all. You guys came over through the tunnel too, right, Lincoln Tunnel? Well, originally we came. We were coming across eighty, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And so we were way north, like Yonkers type shit yeah, up there. Yeah. And then it had a part where you can run alongside the Harlem River, and so FDR. we took that and yeah, FDR it's all the awesome. way down. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, dude, it's fucking rad. And it's like <laughs> my, my only connect, like obviously watching tons and tons of movies growing up. But uh, my son's really into Spider-Man. And I am too. Mine too. Yeah. Dude, dude my kid too. Hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Like we actually came out here, uh, me and my wife and my son came out here last year. And part of it, you know, my kid's like, oh, that's where Spider-Man's at. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, we'll show you around, you know, the best we can. I came out here for scotty's uh kid's birthday you know yep. and we took him around the city and stuff so yeah it's the same thing so like the la like two years ago or so the the new spider-man video game came out and it's like it's a pretty from what i've heard uh youtube uh people it's a pretty <laughs> good representation of the of manhattan you know what i'm saying as far as like building for building street for street so i do not want to come out here in a car at all and i think like the best way to see it is on a bike it's obviously yeah. the easiest way to get around but yet yeah, when you go around you know on a bike throughout the city like fdr manhattan all that stuff it's insane dude it's it's awesome to see it and like i saw your video you know your yeah. little your little crotch video <laughs> whatever it was like dude just seeing up you know up tall like that and all the buildings going yeah. up it's it's insane yeah because like last year when i came out here i ended up taking a car out you know because my bike was broken everything and I was like, I was just dreaming about being on a bike out here. It's you easier know? to get around. Yeah, and, like, and, and don't you get, get to wrong. see everything, you know. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. You yeah. know, like you gotta you You're gotta on edge. Your, you gotta be on your yeah. toes all the whole time, you know, riding around here just the way traffic is. But I tell you know. people all the time, I I love coming out here. It's like kinda like, you know, a couple days of, you know, lawlessness, whatever you wanna call it, ripping around. But when I go home, I'm like relieved to like be in PA <laughs> heading west back home like dog I get to go back to normal for like, you know, a little set while the cruise control yeah just chill you don't have to worry about people hitting yeah. you and white lining and splitting lanes and stuff so yeah. far it doesn't feel like the people here are on edge as much as I was expecting them to be this year's I mean honestly this year's a little weird just because of COVID and everything uh -huh. I feel like you know uh, we haven't been into Manhattan yet since we've been here, but you guys have. And, you know, just to see your guys' pictures from, like, the tunnel and and the FDR, like, that picture of your bike on the FDR yeah. with no, no cars ahead of you, that's, dude, that's unheard of. Like, I've never mm. been here to where What it's time been. was that? That was, like... It was just before traffic. Yeah, there was like so we one, still still though there's yeah. there's never no traffic. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like that's the crazy thing. And and I don't even live here. And I, I know like it's it's absolutely nuts all the time here. There's no such thing as like oh that's traffic time. It's like no dude all day long. There's people everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing about it like uh so like the big bridges like the like the Brooklyn Bridge yeah, and yeah. those type of things. Yep. Um, it's kind of crazy because like in Texas you think of a bridge you think like. 
you know, like right there, you get off and you hit the bridge, but this thing like goes far into the city yeah. and you got to kind of cut in. You go, you go same, underneath it and everything. Yeah. That's the way it is in uh, San Francisco when you do like the Bay Bridge because it's such a high bridge, it has to come in and yeah. kind of taper down a little bit for the uh, Bay and shit like that. So, yeah, this is definitely like, you know, it, back home in Detroit, this is definitely a whole different thing out here. Like, you know, we have one bridge that goes to Canada that no you know we, we can't even go across it right now but it's it's a whole different thing man we're Dude, not that, even, that little section between like where you guys are and like Buffalo New York they just need to open that up to like you know make it possible for us without like super heavy passports to get through and I, just I, put the border above was it Toronto <laughs> right there yeah yeah I think they made it easier now with like the uh, I don't even have it. The enhanced licenses and stuff, yeah. but mm -hmm. yeah, it's still. I don't know. For us, like coming out, everyone asks me every time we come out here. They're like, "Oh, you go through Canada?" It's like, no. Well, why not? Well, the borders are a pain in the ass, and then for us, at least coming here, I think it's like two or three or maybe four hours north of the city, basically where it pumps you out yeah. in Canada. Yeah, because it's like you look at the state of New York, and I didn't really notice this till I came out here. It's like. New York's above Pennsylvania, and then it's like New York City is like this little yeah, yeah. sliver down in the corner, you know, like, yeah. you know, in the southeast corner. Yeah. You know, I, so you got to pull out a map and look at it, you know. I've never been out here uh, up outside of the city, so I don't know, like, mm -hmm. anything outside of, like, New York City, Long Island. I don't know anything about it. I, all I know is it's a pain in the ass to go through Canada, so we, we take 80 across all the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, this fucking, even Long Island, man, like, when you look at it on a map, you don't really, the perspective is not there. Like, you guys rode all the way to the, uh, like, past the Hamptons and shit today. Yeah, we did, uh, it was like, like, about 100 miles each way. So, we did 200-mile round trip to go to, like, the easternmost part of Long Island. That's crazy. And, and that's all still in the same, you it's know. Montauk? Or? Montauk, yeah. Montauk. We went out to Montauk today. Not to be confused with Montuckies. <laughs> you know. The old Colts. Which, which we have not been able to find here in New York. No, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's kind of this 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 whole city. I mean, even like riding uh, on the FDR and looking across the, I guess you would call it the bay or the river. I don't know what, you, what that fucking thing is. The Hudson Harlem, River. Hudson River. Yeah. Looking across to even like. Uh, you know the other parts, which I I don't have a map to like. It's just it some looks, of it's Jersey, so you're looking. Well, no, at, no, on the other side, oh, okay, on yeah, this yeah, side yeah, of yep, it. Yep. So like, uh, you you know, I guess you have Rikers Island down yeah. in there, but like, all there's fucking buildings on the other side too, just as fucking tall. We and city and shit. The the craziest thing, uh, I flew in here for Scotty's wedding a couple years ago or whatever it was. I shit, it might have been longer than that now, but uh. <laughs> Flying into the city was crazy too because it's literally the buildings are all the way out to the edge of the water and up So it looks like it's it looks like a comic book when you fly over the city It's it's so weird just to see like buildings tall buildings just packed, you know Basically water to water side to side. It's it, yeah. it's insane like that So in Dallas like our tallest building in town is 62 stories which is I believe, if I remember, is half of what the Twin Towers were. Oh, just right. one yeah. of the towers. Yeah. I think the Twin Towers were 120 stories. Yeah. And, you know, that's the tallest building in Dallas. And we have a pretty decent size uh, downtown, uh, not compared to, like, Chicago. And now, you know, obviously being here, the king of them. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's pretty insane. Detroit's kind of, I don't know, Detroit's like... You know they filmed RoboCop one in Detroit. Yeah, not really. Yeah, they filmed it in Dallas. Well, and it was Detroit. It's Detroit cops. It's Detroit cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Detroit's like um, we don't have like the, the the ton of tall like huge tall buildings. It's spread out, you know. Yeah. But it's I don't know. It's I I, I kind of like it that way more than here. It's a little for sure. A little it, bit more it's spread more manageable, out. man. Yeah, it's, it's more like, spread out. Like, I feel like when you're here, you, I, it really feels like you're in Vegas and, like, you have to be on edge. You feel like you're, like, on a Red Bull high or fucking coked out of your mind just having to operate every day. I mean, even, even like, for us today, like, you know, for most of the ride, it wasn't too bad. But, like, coming back from Montauk to Long Island, you know, on, uh, I don't even know what parkway we were on, whatever, but traffic jams up and you just start white lining and it's like that's like that's like an everyday thing where you're like stressed out just to get from point a to point b yeah every single time you you hop on a bike we were in we were at that pizza joint in brooklyn or, yeah l and b's 
Spumoni. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then to here was 32 miles. Yeah. It was two hours and yeah. like 30 minutes, I think. or an on, hour. The, on the map or whatever? Yeah, like yeah. Google Maps said it was going to be two Because everyone's doing like five miles an hour. I mean, fortunately, like, we, we, uh, we, we split lanes on the way over here, and it was uh, – it was much more pleasant than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. You know? A little easier. Yeah. Yeah. Car- yeah. Cars were kind of splitting out of our way. Yeah. A little bit. Like, there was a couple times you had to jam on the it's, minors. But. It's, it's illegal, but everybody does it. So I feel like uh, most of the public just kind of is like used to seeing it. And they, yeah. you know, most of the time they, they kind of get yeah, out of your way a little bit. It felt like they moved just as much as I feel like they do in California. So. But yeah, then we were talking about earlier, like, wonder how much different traffic could be around here if they actually legalize splitting lanes. Yeah. Like, how many people would change to ride motorcycles instead of be, trying to be in a car, you know? Like, I don't know. Most of the time, I mean, you know, when you go into the city and stuff, you see a, a lot of bikes. I mean, a lot of people do ride bikes because it's the easy way around, you know? But, I, you know, we... At least for us, coming from Detroit to here, we we take advantage of it because we're we can't split or we don't really have to split lanes or do any of that. So when we get here, man, we kind of like wild out. We like yeah. Yeah. we like purposely try to like <laughs> do having, some shit. You know, we're having some fun. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we're not from here. Woo! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, in Detroit, you know, with you being like pretty much growing up there, like what was the vibe like when you were a kid there, like versus now? Like was it? Has it been long enough to see like Detroit in like some kind of a heyday? Uh, Not that it isn't now, but you know what I mean. Like from it, what we hear, hear throughout the country. So like me as a kid, it was like no one wanted to go to Detroit when I was a kid. Like it was like a shithole. I mean, it's it was a rough city. Um, no one wanted to go there. There were, like the restaurants and the bars and all that stuff were like kind of. I mean, they were there, but there was all like union stuff, you know, whatever. Um, but like. For me, growing up into like cars and motorcycles, it was like the perfect spot because you could get like, I was a 16 year old kid with supercharged Mustang, you know what I'm saying? So like street racing and all that stuff, that was like, you go down to the city, you get away with whatever you wanted to down in the city. For real. Now it's kind of changed a little bit. I mean, it's still out there, but it's it's definitely like gotten a lot nicer. Like now families in the suburbs want to go to the city go there for you know lunch and dinner and gentrification yeah man. yeah you know which hey listen man i dig it uh it, it brings a lot of people in the city um it's nice down there now you know like i don't have a problem taking my you know kid and my wife down there and stuff and and you can still find like the little hood spots that you know were like the og yeah. hood spots and you don't got to worry about anything you know so i'm cool with it you know i dig it man i think it makes a uh it does make it a lot better. It, you know, the argument with it is, is it it raises the property value so high that it pushes out the residents that are there. But, you know, it's a touchy subject, man. But I, I feel like, you know, we're kind of like the way we are as Americans. Like, hey, man, you either shit or get out the pot. It's You know, it's like if you got something rad and you can't afford to keep it. That's why that's why we get pissed off when you see a perfectly old school car sitting in someone's driveway for 15 years and he won't sell it because he thinks he's going to do something with it. Yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, it's just getting rustier and rustier and less worth anything. So like the downtown area, you know, it's like obviously super nice now and like there's a bunch of people that aren't city people that move down there. But on the you know, the outside of the downtown area, there's still a lot of like local Detroit people that like the one good thing is like the city kind of makes it to where they want to keep those OG people yeah. around. You know, they're not like they pay a little out. respect to the history. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, like I said, like the downtown area is cool because like they got the bars and the restaurants and the the lofts now and all that stuff. So there's a bunch of people down there, but like the kind of core to the city is still kind of there. And and you know, they're not like you know they're not kicking people out or you know forcing people with the money. Like those houses are still you know, normal price yeah. houses. It's just the downtown area, you know, like, man, there's like lofts down there that are half a million dollars that, you know, we, shit, we could have bought them places for 20 grand back in the day. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. that shit is out of control, but the, the outs, the outskirts of the city are still Detroit, you know? Yeah. So I, I can't remember. I, I've, I've watched tons and tons of like documentaries and history things on it, but when did like the automotive culture start to leave 
Detroit? Was it like uh, more in the transition from steel to plastic? Uh, it was it? like there was like kind of two big heavy times. Like the 80s were rough. There was a spot in the 80s that were rough. And then actually like when the economy crashed in 07, 08, whatever it was, that was hard on it too because everybody, pretty much every business, I mean, is some way feeding the, feeding yeah. off of the auto industry like my shop like the majority of my customers are they work for the big three they work for a company that manufactures parts for the big three they they have something to do with the auto industry so if they're hurting i'm hurting yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying like it, it kind of all like that's how it was like when when basically like in the 80s and in in like the kind of early 2000s when shit hit the fan that's when it like it, it crumbled like the state of michigan i mean it was bad for a while yeah that's that's wild so what what like when did bikes start to come into a play for you like growing up so i graduated high school i always had cars and bikes um i went to like my local community college got a almost got my associates i was like pretty close to getting my two-year associates for vehicle design uh -huh. i was actually gonna go work for gm and do shit back then it was still drafting boards and you know shit nice. like that but uh my uncle was gonna get me in and that's kind of a, a part where like the auto industry was kind of starting to like mm -hmm. go down a little bit He's, he called me up he said listen man you got to find a, a, a new career i said dude i'm I'm like still in college for this shit, you know? Yeah. Like, what do you mean find a new career? He's like, we can't hire you. Like they're starting to get rid of some of these jobs. So my old man said, let's go to, let's go to bike week, you know? So we packed the bikes up. We went to Florida while we were down there. He's like, yo, go check out this school. He's like, what about, you know, doing mechanic shit for bikes? So I went down there, checked out MMI and I was like, all right, you know? And I literally signed up like shit probably two weeks later, started, you know, a couple yeah. months after that, I packed my shit up and went to Florida, and I went to MMI. What year was that? Uh, it would have been oh. Uh, I went down there oh three. Okay. Yep. So I was there oh three oh four. Um, it was about two years. I I got kind of screwed. I was down there, and I we had like a, a bad rash of hurricanes. Mm -hmm. So like my school got like delayed. Like you know there was flooding and all this shit. So I ended up being down there for almost two years to get my full um, class done. And um, I got hired before I even graduated. I got hired from my local dealership and moved back to, to Michigan after that. So I started April of like 04 at the dealership back mm. home. That's so weird. that's kind of how that whole thing like. So like it, it, so around that time, so you're taught, you when did you graduate high school? Like around? 01. So that's me too, I graduated in yep. 01, so it's like, you know, at the time, I was about to go to college. Like, I I don't know if, you know, I've said it a million times for everybody to listen, but I was going, I was graduating and starting, I was going to go to Art Institute. I had everything figured out to do uh, um, drafting and design for architecture, and I was going to go into that field. I was kind of in the same. I was, like, architecture, vehicle design. I was kind yeah. of in that whole, like, kind of, I was into that whole part of it. So I was kind of, like I said, I was going to do my associates, and then kind of see what happened from there, kind of get my foot in the door at GM and shit hit the fan, you know? So when I was in there though, like it, it, so when I was, before I got into college, I had a job um, as like a half-ass apprentice, but I was really just running blueprints yeah, yeah. and doing a little bit of draftsman work, yep. like, you know, changing some things on the papers and then plotting them out and yep. running blueprints. And I started to look at, you know, talking to the architect that I was working for, he started to, you know, tell me, he's like, yeah, when I became an architect in the 60s, you know, you didn't have to have a, a master's degree. And then I was like, so what what have you designed? He goes, oh, I designed this part of this building. And I'm like, what? So, like, you designed, like, that one corner? Little, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, like, what the, that sounds lame. <laughs> dude, I, I started, I started figuring that out real quick, because, like, same thing, like, uh, when I was going to get in at GM, they were like, well, you're going to run, the, you know, this to here and this and all this stuff. You're going to start at the bottom. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, and then I'm like starting at the same thing. They're like, yeah, I, I designed like the center console for a Corvette. I'm like, wait, just one little center console. That's all you did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on interior design. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm like, all right. Like, like 
I would be so pissed because you know when I when I sketch paint jobs, like I sit there, I I envision it from every angle, I you know I just immerse myself into how's the viewer gonna think, how's the rider feel riding this, thinking about it, and I can't imagine designing something like a car, right? I'd be so pissed if I drew a design and came up and like, all right, we're gonna use your headlights. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, no, either use it all or fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I'd be okay with that. You know what I mean? Honestly, like looking back at it now, like that, I guess that's the cool thing about bikes too. You know, like most people that are in the 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 bike community or like in the industry, you know, they kind of do like what you're saying. You know, they start to finish almost a whole thing you know yeah, instead of just it, yeah you know i know there's guys that do just parts or whatever but that's a whole in my opinion that's a whole separate kind of thing of the industry but bikes most people like start to finish man they have they have either the whole say in it if they're a bike builder or whatever or you know at least they can kind of envision the whole thing and kind yeah. of do it from start to finish you know yeah this was weird to me man because like i said it's like are, do you be proud of that? I mean, it, I guess it would be, like, cool if you were, you know, with your old lady at, like, a Starbucks and, like, you know, the nine, the C. They don't give a shit. Yeah, They're man. like, no, they don't give a shit. But like, I made that. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, like, if you, like, work on, like, if you're a construction guy, like, how many times when you take your wife into town, you're like, yeah, I built that third floor right there. Yeah, you see that roof over there? Yeah. You did that, yeah. you know. My buddy Brad does ACs, and every time we drive by a building that he did the AC, he goes, put the AC in that building right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was an electrician and everything. That's like how there it is. Like, I wired that building. They're like, sweet. So you made the lights go on outside. I was like, yep, exactly how the plans say. Yeah. It's funny, man. Because, like, yeah, that'd be crazy. Like, yeah, dude, I, I don't know if I would. Uh, that seems, like, stressful. Like, who gets to be the guy that designs it all? Like, who... You know, like why doesn't why? I, I guess think, it's good because you need to build a department and, and you need that many jobs to fill this void. I, I don't think anybody does anymore. Like I know a couple guys that work for Harley Davidson, like in the you know part of it's in design, some of it's in the art department, stuff like that. And like there's just teams of guys that kind of do it's stuff. Like they put every, groups. They put everything there. together, and and then there is I mean there is one guy that says yeah yeah or nay, but it's still it's like there's a bunch of guys that. Put stuff together to have one concept on something you know that's that's why i can never work in that setting if i was having if you say you're the dude right you're the yay your name yeah dude, and i put all this shit on the table like look this is this fucks dude this right here this fucks this is gonna get you fucked this is gonna make everybody want to fuck you this is my you know what i mean and then he's like nah i'm not seeing it. it's like because you're not a fucking biker motherfucker you don't know what this shit's about you know what I mean? it's tough man yeah it's i mean I, I hear that from a lot of people it fucking sucks that it's kind of come down to that but i don't know like i guess that's why i i kind of dig my little like I, you know they've got a bunch of dudes out there that are doing a bunch of cool stuff and they're instagram famous and all that stuff and I don't know, man. I just kind of like stick into my little thing that I do. I just stay off to the sidelines and kind of, yeah. you know, I do, I do it. Half the shit I do at my shop is, you know, stuff that I was doing at the dealer for 15 years, service work, stuff like that, which is fine. That, it, honestly, it pays the bills. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not like a cool guy for it, but I, I, I keep the lights on. I got my building. I, I keep going, you know, like. But you've also I, done like full on builds. Yeah, and and, and you know, and I, dude, I, I love doing it, and I wish I could do it like all the time. Like, there's other guys out there that do it all the time like that. But like I said, man, I still like. I don't know. I just it's having that happy medium. Between, yeah, yeah. You know, like your service work that pays the bills. Yep. And then you know that having the bike builds that fills the void. Yeah. You know, and everything, and you know, putting your creative side out there. Like I said, man, I guess my thing is I just don't like to. I don't know. I just like to be like in the off on the sideline just kind of chilling like looking at everything and i just keep my head down and keep doing my thing and yeah staying out of the uh not i wouldn't say that you're not out of the limelight because like i said you're you're well known amongst the uh um, amongst the the bikers in this in this scene yeah you know what i mean and um i mean and respected too which is another thing that's uh honestly that's kind of I, i'd rather be like that i mean i don't know like like I said, man, the social media thing is super cool. Like it's brought a bunch of people together. Like we talk about it all the time. Like, but it also like, you know, creates other shit that goes on. And I'm just happy to be like, not involved in that and just kind of chill and yeah. you know, like have a good time with everybody. You know, so I think 
it's probably easier for a guy like you who did come through the dealership not to have to play as much of the social media game as some other some other people do. Because, like I said, you you've already probably built somewhat of a cus- customer base over the years. Yeah. In there. Yep. And um, and then also like in Detroit, like in, as far as competition in our the kind of scene of bikes that it seems like I, I'm not a, I'm kind of generalizing and assuming here, yeah. but like the kind of bikes here in this fucking driver yeah. right now, yep. like I don't know anybody else in the Detroit area it's, that's kind of pushing that kind of vibe. It, it, I mean, it's slim pickings. I mean, it's we. You know, obviously, everything that kind of happens on, like, the West Coast and the East Coast, it takes, like, you know, two, three, four, five years to kind of get to everywhere else. And it, it still hasn't... I mean, it's catching on a little bit, like, with some of the stuff. It's just... It's kind of crazy because just, like, this year, which has been a really screwed up year with COVID and everything, but I have guys that, like, you know... 50 60 year old dudes talking about like t-bars and stuff oh yeah you know and it's like nah not you you know <laughs> come on but it's like like random customers that i've never seen before you know like yeah oh yeah i see you do this and that what's up with that you know and i kind of explain to them like what the deal is and you know you can you can see that they've already been like researching like looking at pictures and like seeing other things and stuff like that so they kind of have like an idea they just need somebody to like kind of put the stamp on it push them a little bit forward you know like well the thing is too is like it's sad but i I love the dealership that i worked at it was a cool place i made good like really good money for for a long time obviously i went to all the training and and got to do a lot of cool stuff with that but uh they just didn't want to like they didn't want to like think outside the box at all you know like whatever was in the catalog that's what they want to do Mm-hmm. And I was always the type that was like, I'm cool with that, like, you know, whatever, but there's other stuff out there. Yeah. yeah. That's a part of the industry, you know what I'm saying? And like, like, why don't we think outside the box yeah. a little bit, you know? And it just never, it never really... We can still make money on offering other people stuff. Other yeah, people. you know, it, it just yeah. never, I don't know, it, it, it just... I don't know. It got it got frustrating because it was like it was Harley stuff only, and that's it. Right. Which I get. Like I, I completely get it. But you, we did have like, shit. One of one of my best friends still works at the dealership. Young dude. You know, like he wants to try to push that stuff. He's built a couple bikes there that they've let him do, and they come out great. It's just they never like really push it past that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I completely understand what you're saying because I deal with that in Texas, and that's why. I had to go to Milwaukee to the dudes in Milwaukee uh, are the dudes that really helped start um, the whole performance Dyna thing in yeah. Texas. Yep. They didn't help start. They helped gave us, they gave us a first place to go congregate, you know, who the fuck just, <laughs> oh, <it's my> glass. <laughs> <laughs> so um, back in 2016, like these dudes were, were throwing little, you know events at the dealership because one of the dudes the dude that i was talking to there tommy he was the one that was running the cowboy harley davidson so he was having he was doing things but you know when when you're trying to like kind of usher into trend like that these dealerships want immediate returns That's, on everything that happens i, I will say that oh, i will back that up a hundred percent the problem is is that they would see something and and Har- and, and i'll say this too harley davidson like the motor company they have people in there that have great ideas they have people in there younger guys that are trying to like push this stuff and they they'll come out with like an advertisement scheme or or whatever you want to call it the dealers will kind of jump on for a second they'll say hey man look at this is the next best thing it's like ah we i've been doing that for fucking five years now Mm -hmm. well we're gonna try this so we put together like one bike it didn't sell like the next day or someone didn't come in and buy a part the next day and they're like yeah no scrap that we're going back to street glides yeah you know it's like they never gave it like they gave it like less than 24 hours to try to make things work it didn't the return wasn't there like instantly and they were like see what yeah we're done with that the dealers don't get it and i guess like you get it because like you guys throw the bike nights you understand about feeding the culture around you into it it's like it's like it's not all about like just like saying hey come spend money money here hey you like this type of bike? Come fuck with us. Let's come hang I'm, out. I'm the worst for that. I would have I would have parties or you know my my uh, grand opening party or like the one year anniversary party or anything. We used to do these little thing like get-togethers, and I'd have a bunch of people at the shop, you know, having a good time. And I never even like 
pushed my own stuff. Like, you know, I wasn't trying to sell like shirts or nothing. I literally was just trying to get people. You're like, here, here's some free beer. So, yeah, so yeah. Out, you, you, you literally. Know, like I was just like, cause, cause that's what I wanted to do at these places. And everyone's like, oh, you need to be selling t-shirts and this and that. It's like, yeah, you're right. I probably should, but that wasn't my focus on this whole thing. My focus so, is just trying to get people together. You what, know? It, what it kind of seems like, because Michigan early on um, had kind of a scene. You know, there was a couple of dudes, like, what was the, the Michigan Misfit? Yeah, they had whatever. a couple of guys, yeah. So, like, when I first got into it, which, you know, when I first got into all this shit, it was pretty pretty early on, considering in the Midwest or whatever, yeah. or the South, wherever the fuck I am. Um, and those dudes were already fucking up there trying to rip willies and yep. create, like, Go this to bike whole thing. Yeah. And shit, yeah. So I felt like maybe your your local bike scene was was waiting for a shop like you to come out. It, I mean, I feel like everywhere needs like something where you can kind of go and like most of these guys and not even like in our scene, like, you know, baggers, diners, just bike guys in general want to go somewhere, have a good time, drink some beers, see some chicks and see some people doing some dumb shit you know what i'm saying yeah. like burnout yeah movies. you know whatever and it, and it's like yeah people are waiting for that and yeah. no one you know the couple spots would pop up here and there that would do it and you know we had a we had a place right down the street from my shop that they'd have bike nights on friday nights that would get pretty out of control and shit at the end man there was probably thousands of bikes that would show up at gibraltar this shop down there or this place and like they just closed up. That was it. They were done. True. And everyone's like, well, who's going to have the Friday, you know, Gibraltar bike nights now? You know, and it's like, I, I don't have the property for that, you know, or the place. Yeah, and right. like, and, and some of the people there, I don't want them at the shop. But still, it's like, we're looking for a place to like. Like ha- transfer it, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's what I've noticed, man. I, I feel like some of the, uh, and it's, it's because of things like social media and Instagram that these uh guys find this bike scene they see guys like steve or myself or you or you know anybody and they're like man that looks fun i want to do that shit and then they look back they go open the window and like where the fuck am i gonna find a shop like clem speed shop and dudes like steve that ride that i can go fuck with and you know and then some of them end up becoming guys like us you know like like craig or you know I need to stop talking about Craig on this fucking podcast. <laughs> no, everybody's gonna think he's like, you know, <laughs> he's like the shit or something. No, he is pretty I, bad. I say this with like a lot of it. It's like just sometimes you just got to be the guy that goes out and you start doing it. You know, like people are gonna follow. Like if you think it's cool and you're doing some rad shit, like just go do it. And then people are they're gonna say they're gonna be like, yeah, I wish I was there. I would have came if you had invited me. And it's like I put it out there and I you weren't there. You know, the moment I left, and then you hate to leave some people behind. But it's like jealousy sometimes makes the craziest shit happen. Yeah. I you know? hate more than anything grown ass men who say, "Well, I was gonna come, but you didn't invite me." Dude, thanks for the invite. Or <laughs> say that. I fucking hate that. Thanks I'm like, invite. I'm gonna say that to you next time, <laughs> yeah. dude. When so- I don't show up. <laughs> You're like, it's why so didn't you sad, show up? Man. Why didn't you? Come Where's my invite, man? Night, yeah, yeah. Bro, no invite, bro. Invite. Yeah. That shit's so annoying, man. So. But- it's like you just got to be out there and you just got to fucking do it. Yeah, for sure. That's the thing. It's like, uh, you know, in Dallas, we didn't really have shit going on. We started doing our uh, New Year's ride, which is kind of like our anniversary yeah. thing. And um, it just wasn't nothing going on. But I knew through social media, I knew there was at least 20, 30, 40 people out there that dug these type of bikes. And uh, and that's just the people that are on Instagram. Like, not everybody's on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you know? I, I feel like people are, like, timid, too. Like, I, I have a lot of customers that, you know, they'll, some guys aren't, like, real social media guys. Like, you know, some of the older dudes, whatever. But they'll, they'll go on Facebook. And I'm not a big Facebook guy. But they'll go on Instagram or Facebook and see something. And they'll be like, oh, man, I see you had some people out here for something. It's like, yeah, like, you know, where were you at? Oh well, you know, I don't know. Like you, you, you guys are like the Dyna guys. It's like no, 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 dude. Like just, I don't give a shit what bike you have. Just come out, man. Like yeah. Do you, do you want to like have fun? Do you want to like go ride and like even like the you know, we had the Aiden ride. Yeah. So it's based out of here, but we do it in Detroit. This was the second year that we've done it, and uh, the amount of people that I've never seen before that show up for that because it's a charity event and everything is awesome and then i kind of have to i have to kind of like pre-warn the people like i give a little bullshit speech just saying like hey 
we're going to take this ride. We have no, you know, police escorts. We have no, you know, we, we, we kind of road crew it ourselves, but it's just like, listen, if you guys see like four or five dudes, like ripping up on the side of the shoulder at a hundred miles an hour, get past, just let us go. We're, we're trying to help everyone out. Cause most people aren't really, they don't know kind of how we ride and stuff. Yeah, and they're yeah. kind of a little timid about it. And I tell them like, listen, if you guys don't want to be around that shit, just hang at the back or meet us here. This is where we're going. Meet us there. You yeah. guys don't have to ride like us. You guys don't have to keep up. You don't have to do nothing. Just come out, enjoy, and you know, yeah. and, you know, whatever. I, I just, the only thing I'm thinking in my mind right now is me and you and Bob in Spearfish Canyon last year. <laughs> that shit was wild. Dude. Oh, yeah. Then you tell him I'm gonna go fill my glass with dude, Sturgis. Is I don't even want to fuck around fucking, with Sturgis, dude, dude. Last year, that was like right before Bob got pulled over. Then later that day, you got pulled over. But that's why he left. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Between he's like, I dropped my bike and got a ticket. Fuck yeah. this place. I'm out of here. <laughs> no, but like uh, going on that, and we're talking with like big epic events, you know, like you know, show up. But sometimes it's the events with like five ten people that's just your boys and you know you just make the best time out of you know the little shit like that's, Dude, I that's said the your, stuff i love i said your camp out that was like the best in my opinion that was one of the best ideas i know you get like people have been doing it but like for michigan yeah that was like one of the best ideas like i'd rather do a camp out than you know say have like a party or something because the, the parties are cool people obviously have fun and shit but like the camp out brings a bunch of people yeah. from different areas, you know, like shit. Hey, we had Mike who we rode with today. Um, he's from New York. He rode all the way from New York yeah. City, you know, along with some other people to just come to Michigan camp out. You what's know? the I, 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 I'm kind of bad with names, but what's the dude from uh, New York that came to the velodrome? That was the dude that um, looped it. The first was that the same guy? <laughs> yeah. The first uh, year of your camp. Zach, out. I I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah, yeah. Starts but dude, like same thing. We had a, a bullshit. We have this velodrome. It's a yeah. bicycle, oval old sc- track. dude. It's like a banked oval track. Ghetto yeah, fucking, ass in the middle of the hood in Detroit. Dude, that one, the one turn on it had like an a six eight, inch, an eight inch, yeah. six inch like jump and elevation the crack. change. Yeah. So either you took it really high or you yeah. Took it really low. <laughs> yeah. But, dude, he came out from New York for that. Yeah. I'm like, bro, it's a one-day freaking, you know, like, dude, bullshit. It's cold as It's cold as shit. It was but like you know what? That, that's to my point, though. That's the thing is that, like, it, like, a lot of people, a lot of younger people are starving for this connection to what they see online. And they see it strong on the other side of the Rockies, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, that's why, like, I've been trying to make an effort to come in around and, and like, do more of this Midwest and East Coast stuff to find shops like yeah, yourself yeah. or – um fuck i did like vex cycles out of uh like uh wisconsin i always yep. want to say milwaukee or uh minnesota <laughs> i mix them up uh but like find these shops that are like our style of bikes and our style of riding so that like people can kind of you know fuck with those shops yeah. and know who the who the connection is to the scene you know what yeah I mean? and and like with me too like i've always kind of been like i i would love to put 50,000 miles on in two years, but I, I just, I can't, I don't have the no. time and you know, whatever, but that's what, that's the kind of stuff that I want. That's the kind of stuff. Like I take pride in like doing bikes. Like I'm not a show bike guy mm-hmm. by any means. I'm, I wouldn't build a show bike for myself. So like, I'm, that's not really my thing, but I want to build a bike that someone could hop on and say, Hey, I'm going to put 25,000 miles on this bike this year. And I live in Michigan, you well, know, see- I think right now in our industry, we don't really need show bikes. We need people to, like you, that build rippers, build bikes that are fun to ride. I think that people they right still now look good. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't but, have a problem. I just like. But the, like, if you get a chip in the paint, who cares? There's no fucking problem with that. That's and, fine. And you know what? You, know, it, you and, get a scratch in your crash marks. You tipped it over at a gas station. All right, shit happens. Yes, but the thing is, is like I guess in my in, in my eyes, like you know, and I get it. Like guys that like guys that have like big legit shops that are building like big money yeah. bikes. You know, they're taking those bikes. They're they're trailering them to Sturgis. They're they're showing them off. Or they're trailering them to wherever to show them off. I get that. I do. But. Like I, I have a lot of respect for Steve, you, a bunch of people that take bikes that are, I don't want to say it's a show bike, but it's a, a, a well-built bike, custom paint, yeah. all this shit, and Dude. they're still going to smash miles on it. If I didn't custom paint for a living, then I would probably have 
either solid color, colors or I'd be rocking stock paint. But you still got, I mean, you got, yeah. there's more to that bike than just a paint job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like, agree. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it would be still that other shit, but yeah. I would, I, you know, like, the paint is just, I mean. You wouldn't have Here's the thing. I don't, I, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really, like, want to paint baggers. That's the thing. It's like, I have a painted bagger, and I would love to paint on my homies' baggers that are, do what we do, but. I'm just not, uh, I'm not really hungry for bagger paint jobs, if you will. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, I think, you know, from a, a spectrum of our industry, from a spectrum of our culture and motorcycling, that, you know, just being here, like, like as soon as we rolled up to the bar that you guys were at, and your New York homies that you've made relationships with over the years, that's the shit that yeah. I'm fucking all about, is like this connection and, and, uh, the bikes are kind of like just the, uh, they're kind of like the glue for the experiences, man. Like they kind of like help us do all this shit. They help us become familiar with each other, dude. For sure. Like I have, you know, I I do like the FXR Jam. That that, like that is one of the events that like I want to go to every single year, no matter what I got going yeah. on. Because for me. It's a quick, you know, like we do it in a three day weekend, you know, yep. we'll leave on Friday, come home Sunday. It's, you know, 650 miles from us. It's not, not too bad, bad, you know? Mm -hmm. So we'll do that. But the guys down there are awesome. And like, you know, over the years, Mighty Whitey, he's coming, he's he's gonna be here tomorrow. You know what for I'm real? saying? Like he's coming from, yeah. Oh, he's, fuck, I didn't even text Chris here. Yeah, so like, that's what I'm saying. Like shit like that. Like um, we're out here for a whole different event and he's coming from the east coast we're coming from you know michigan and meeting up with as many people as we possibly can for a one day yeah, and, and the party. event's badass the event's badass but it's not even it's just like i said it's more just us getting on our bikes meeting up and who gives a shit what the yeah. event is just let's let's roll out you know that is a that is the thing it's like it doesn't really matter it like there's no there, nobody's winning trophies no right no there's no other reason just to go than just to fucking hang out with your boys and see some homies from different parts of the country yep 100 percent. yeah and and Love honestly it. and and you know like our way of riding back home you know because basically you know it's pretty similar to here but we don't have to split lanes we don't have as much traffic but we have shitty roads city streets you know you can rip around but it's really nice to go to a different state fuck shit up in a different state you know see how they ride i mean honestly I, i'm i'm gonna put this out there steve's a an insane rider puts a ton of miles on that dude can handle his bike but some of the best riders are from new york city because they have to deal with this shit every single fucking day yeah hands I down seagull this shit's fucking scotty wild. i will put scotty up against anybody i'm, I'm putting it out there right now i will put <laughs> scotty up against anybody in the United States, hands down, he will fucking tear shit up. He will go on the biggest clapped out piece of shit bike and tear people up. Nice. And there's other guys out there out west because he's been all over the place. Yeah. There's a bunch of dudes that will back me up on that. The dude is fucking insane. He has to ride in this shit every single fucking day. <laughs> then he has that big ass black Dodge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's all timid. You don't want to get on the podcast. Man. Yeah, he don't like. He's not a social media he's guy. He's not a. He's not a. He, he doesn't like none of this shit. He's the best rider. So when did you decide to leave the uh, dealership and start your own deal? And what what was the the uh, kind of the motivation to do your own thing? Uh, I had been doing it on the side for like quite a while, and they were they knew what I was doing like to a certain extent, but it just got part of it was I got so busy on the side, and I was pretty busy at the shop at at the dealership to where it was tough for me to juggle everything. And I kind of had to say, all right, I'm either gonna stop doing side work and just smash it at the dealership, or I'm gonna go to the next kind of, you know, next step and get rid of the dealership and do it on the side. Um, the dealership thing kind of started getting frustrating. Everything kind of went like a little too corporate and we started making a little less money as techs so like between me making less money, uh, me being busy on the side, and then honestly like a big push was Danny, Danny D. Like when he moved to Michigan, you know, he like, uh, he pretty much put it out there. He's like, dude, fuck this, let's get a building. Like I don't want nothing to do with it, but let's get a building. You start your thing, I want something to be a part of. And he, Dude, that motherfucker pushed me like no tomorrow. And honestly, like I was still timid. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to 
you know, buy a building, do all this shit, keep my lifestyle the way it was. And we were looking at buildings in Detroit. We wanted to be in the city Mm -hmm. and the prices of the buildings were going through the roof at that point. So we, or I should say, Danny found a building like a mile down from my house. He found it on like, this is no joke. He found it on like a Wednesday and we had the keys by like Saturday. So he literally was just like, hey, guess what? You gotta quit your job. I'm like, <laughs> time to make shit happen. All right, I guess we're, we're in. So like between Harley doing what they did and Danny kind of pushing me, like it was this just- This was what, like 17, 18, uh, 16? Yeah, 17. Yeah, 17. Oh, uh, no, no, no. 18 is when I quit the dealership because I did 15. I, it was I actually on the on when? the on the dot. I started April first. So did Danny build uh, his that that FXR he brought in 17? No, no, the 718 bike. Yeah, that was built before, before that. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. built here in New York and in in, in Astoria, in Bra- yeah. in Queens. Yeah, yeah. Alex built that bike. That bike nice. is insane. Alex, that dude. Tomorrow we'll we'll take a we'll take a ride to his shop tomorrow. Okay. This dude is insane, man. This guy they call him the crazy Russian. He is a, a madman, dude. Yeah, I got Russians up here. <laughs> yes. He's like Grand Theft Auto. Or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every nationality yeah. in New York, dude. Every nationality. Dude, we yeah. were sitting at that pizza joint. I was just looking at it like, oh yeah, not American. Well, that's the redneck in me. She's not American, <laughs> you know. But no, it was uh, it was just crazy seeing all the different uh. Uh, people speaking different languages and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean. But yeah, that's a uh, it, it's this style of bike, man. I, I you know with you, you guys follow like the two lane life and those yeah, dudes. Yeah, these guys are you know older gentlemen. You know, and they're fucking ripping across country on t bars and shit. Yep. Well, they're kids. I mean, I mean, I'm sure I, I know those dudes from just going through like uh, all the drag shows and stuff at you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were out there too. That, yep. uh Louisville, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Louisville, Louisville, yep. Louisville. Good, good people, man, and it's cool because it's like you know father son stuff, and I I still ride with my dad and shit, you know, so it's cool to see that kind of stuff. Well, like that style of bike, I think, or just the style that we've all been pushing for the last couple of years now is starting to, uh, it's starting to make sense, and because everybody's doing it now, it's starting to become more palatable for people that couldn't get over the look of it. Like well, to some people. A pangers yeah, yeah. and Fords or that's, fuck off. Dude. That's the Midwest, <laughs> dude. Listen, every single FXR that you buy out of the Midwest has 16 inch A pangers and forward controls on it. That's I it. I couldn't imagine doing the riding we did today, just splitting lanes with A pangers. But yeah, but yeah, you have right. to explain that. You have to explain that to people because once again, we we just yeah. talked about this today. In Michigan, you don't need to split lanes. You can you can go buy a bagger. And pack your shit up and go do 400 miles in a day and come home on a Sunday. You don't yeah. need a small bike. You don't need T-bars. You don't need any of that. But the thing is, is most people, you know, I get guys all the time. Yeah, I want to put, you know, 14-inch ape hangers on my street glide. And he's a short guy like me. Well, yeah. why? Well, you know, my buddy Jack's got it like that. And they said they'll fit. Yeah. It's like, dude. They how said do you- they'll fit without changing the cables, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like. Dude, that's uncomfortable. Like it's uncomfortable, and like, do you? How do you ride? Do you do slow maneuvering. They're already uncomfortable on a bigger bike as it is, and then you get you know fourteen inch a hangers that are like forty inch forward. wide. They're reaching. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of show them, and I always have like either like my FXR, the road glides mostly at the shop every day. They'll ask questions, and I say, hey, sit on it. Like, sit on it. You feel more comfortable. I said when you're out on the road, you you feel that much more comfortable actually riding the bike, Mm -hmm. you know? And I get guys, I I just had a guy before I left here that I put, you know, 10 inch LA chopper bars on like a, you know, I think it was a limited. He's switching over to T bars on that bike just because he's, he's getting used to the look of it. And he feels that they're too wide for him, you know, slow maneuvering, you know? It's, it's, it's like the fact whenever like, the new Tahoe comes that. out, right? When the new Tahoe comes out, nobody likes it. It's like, no, I'm, I'm so used to the other one. I'm so used to everything being the way it was that when you almost get that new that new shit in your face, you're you're almost kind of like, I'm, no, I, I'm wired to hate this because I'm not used to it. But then it just you start seeing more people like do their 
their twist on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's why I was saying earlier when we were sitting on the couch talking, I was like, I'm a visual guy. And I know that visual sells everything. Like, performance is great. Like, it is the backbone of everything we do on motorcycles. But you can't visually see performance. So you have to use the visualization of how the bike looks from from toe to toe on, uh, you know, how to sell it to them. Because a lot of dudes initially, you know, for a lack of a better analogy here, they're, they're pretty insecure on their bikes. And they're looking for something that's going to make them feel yeah. cool and feel feel more badass than they normally are you know fuck i'm i'm not as cool as my fucking bike is you know what i mean so, so it's like you're saying you can't visually see performance but how was that wheelie you did earlier uh, well you, you know hold on you can't say that you're still in breaking mode right yeah, well you keep that warranty it slipped <laughs> but no that's the uh that's the kind of the thing that I, you we know saw it he felt it i just i looked at my saw the headlight I see, straight I see up the headlight up i yeah. was like whoa all right <laughs> That shit's addicting though, so I had to stop right there. Hey, they said a thousand miles. You're at like eight hundred. Hey, that's dude. A- I'm thirty seven miles away from two thousand miles today. No, uh, forty thousand miles. Thirty seven miles. Today is my two year anniversary from the day I signed the papers on my bike and brought it home, and I have thirty seven miles to hit forty thousand. I, I just got a quick question, and I don't here. have it. We'll be on the podcast still by the time it's done. I got a quick question here. Huh? The the break in thing. This yeah. Is- Explain this to me. So they dyno tuned your bike. I, I you, know where you you're got, going with this. I'm gonna you, follow you. you. You got you got you got a dyno sheet that did full pulls on it. Yeah. So you, you're already, what's the break in for? You already beat the shit out of it on the dyno. What's so the it? the funny thing is, we did a podcast with with the guys from the the horse uh, um, House, House of Harley, Harley. Um, and the two two of the dudes are from Texas. They're friends of mine. Okay. I painted both their bikes early on, and uh, one is uh, the service manager now is harper he's built some pretty badass fxrs in texas and shit like that and so the other dude that actually built my bike his name's j-rock and and uh, he's pretty thorough man like to, to be honest with you i've never really had my bike worked on by a Harley dealership the way everything felt after they touched it i was like pretty nice man everything fucking shifted correctly and moved right and you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a painter that knows how to fucking take bolts out and in. You so, know what I mean? So Danny, Danny uh, jokes all the time because we get a bunch of guys, you know, and actually, uh, which was funny in Sturgis last year, Joe Kidd was staying with us, you know. Yeah. Great dude, hilarious as shit, you know. He's talking, he, he made a comment, he goes... He said something like, "Oh, you actually you use torque wrenches?" And Danny's like, "Yeah, he's fucking he uses torque wrenches on everything, you know, whatever." And like we we talk about that. There's guys, I mean, that you know, put stuff together, and there's guys that like really put stuff together, torque wrenches, tolerances, the whole deal. Yeah. And you can tell the difference in a bike that yeah. is, you know, assembled correctly. I like to look at it like this: like it's if I work in a dealership, <laughs> <laughs> if I worked in a dealership, and you know things were a little bit more repetitive then it, it would be so much easier to to start remembering okay pulling off the the exhaust pulling off the air cleaner pulling the heads off pulling all these things you did you do it you're obviously going to do it's them non-stop more. it's yeah. it's, it's it's repetitive for one and then you know like you're constantly at, at least in early in people's career you're constantly like in the service manual looking at torque specs i mean i know torques i know most torques torque specs off the you know top, top of my head, head. Yeah. so like that stuff kind of comes natural and then also which was good and a bad thing like i was kind of forced into a, a flat rate mechanic at an early age like i was only in the dealership for two years and they basically switched us over to flat rate mm. i was nervous as hell i'm like dude i'm you know two years in i'm I'm still learning, I'm still slow, and now you want me to basically earn my money off of how quick I can get this shit done, you know? Yeah. So it forced us to become better at, you know, you, I don't want to call them shortcuts, but you find ways to kind of do things a little bit quicker, a little easier, you know, to, to make that money off of being flat yeah. rate versus, you know, an hourly guy. Yeah, so that, like like I said, we were, we did this little podcast afterwards. You, you know just try to you know give these guys a chance to kind of not give them a chance but just wanted to talk to them and see how I, i've never done a podcast with people that are actually currently working in a dealership yeah. you know and, and of course you can't be like super brutally honest but at the same time like i hung out in that dealership all week yeah. like i walked in like an employee that was the closest i'll ever be to employ like working at a dealership 
I come in at you know seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning. I walk upstairs to where all the business people are. Yep. And, hey, hey, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, Sam. And I'm walking in my office. They set up for me to do podcasts and shit. And um, talking with him, like Harper, you know, because I joke with him because he he built a he he did a a one eleven uh, you know Evo style right when they came out in his uh, FXR. And I just at remember the dealership or on his own. No, he did it while he was working at a dealership, but it was down in Austin. Okay. And uh, you know the the other guy, uh, Tommy, used to run the dealership in Austin, and also was a part in junction with a couple other dudes at the dealership and running bike nights outside of the town. Okay. They were really, really starting to bring the culture of the performance bikes down there. And so there was this one, uh, some Instagram videos or whatever. Like Harper is literally put the fucking motor in it heat cycled it threw a carburetor twisted it up tuned it a little bit rode it to the bike night and he's fucking just doing burnouts <laughs> with someone pouring liquor in his mouth <laughs> with like 15 miles on it <laughs> he's literally a fucking party animal and i love that dude and so that we were doing the podcast we were talking about breaking in i was asking j-rock the guy that did the motor work who's like you know he's a motor nerd he's yeah. all about it he's like you know, I usually tell my customers between two and, you know, he says a thousand miles and bring it back. Yeah. Do the oil changes. Make sure there's no metal in there, things like that. And then Harper's like, no, nah, just run it. He's like, <laughs> Harper's a service manager. J-Rock's the guy that does, he's like under him, basically. Yep. He's like, just fucking rip it, dude. I mean, so I don't know. I, the dealership, I mean, here's the thing. There, There is a proper break-in for everything. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. The, the dealerships... You know they can do whatever to be honest with you they can do whatever they want they have enough money to where if that boy if your bike blows up they can come back and say all right let's fix it and figure out what happened and they'll pay their employees and they'll eat the cost if it's something on their end or they're going to charge you for something yeah me being a a, a one-man shop like you know that's all my money that's everything my time everything like i'm pretty hardcore about like you know proper heat cycles breaking in like i try not to give it back to them until it's ready for them to at least kind of ride it you know decent make sure yeah. either the car or the map's decent for them because if that comes back like i gotta eat it you yeah. know what i'm saying like that kills me on time and money yeah i got a i got a bike tour apart right now that uh you know I don't know what the kid did. You know, we, he's kind of being a little shady on his stories of what happened and all this stuff. Uh, I called the company that I used for the cylinders. They had some little issues and, you know, but they're not going to help me out with it. So basically, I'm kind of rebuilding a motor for a guy out of my pocket because I don't know what he did. I know what I did, but I, you know what I'm saying? Like it's That's just, almost where it gets kind of, kind of weird. Like why, you know, like you have to start figuring out where... And what companies on the other end to work with? Because if it is, it's like with a, you know, not to throw shade on F, uh, SNS, but I've heard that they've had a handful of, uh, you know, top ends that are out of, out of, out of, you know, not shaped right, and it causes, uh, you know, smoke, blow by, this is compression. This is I. This is a, a hundred inch SNS kit that yeah. I'm dealing with. And actually, at this point, like I spoke to somebody, the guy was super cool. Um, I have a guy that I kind of know there. He was super cool. Let me know what happened. And I said, yeah, the guy probably didn't, you know, follow procedure properly, but it still should have done that. How do I prove it? You know what I'm saying? Like it was, right. it was 200 miles, you know, and he had an issue. And at this point, like I, I'm, I can't afford to go back with that same company. They're not going to help me out with it on this one. So basically I'm building him instead of a hundred inch like kit. And he had head work done from a local guy and all this stuff. I'm basically, I got the cylinders and heads back out at that guy and building this guy a 95 inch, you know, on my own dime at this point, you know, because yeah. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to, yeah. you know, like it, it is what it is. And, and this is the first time in, since I've opened my shop that I have to like kind of eat it like that, but whatever. Yeah, and that's what sucks is because once you do have to eat it, it's like, there's no, there's no argument that you win because honestly, like you don't want to. You don't want to not go to bat for your customer. Yeah. But you also don't want to go to bat with the big-ass company that you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your career as a motorcycle shop. The way I looked at it is I, I, I made a phone call. I, I, I got a, a, in, in contact with this guy. I made a phone call, had a 
awesome conversation with the dude. He actually was super cool, said he follows me on social media, and he knows, like, because I told him, I said, listen, man, when I put together a motor, I don't just slap parts on. I measure everything, ring end gap. I, you know, I, I, I measure cylinders before I even put them together, even though yeah. they're brand new. You know, I, I, I try to do the best I possibly can with it yeah. and still had an issue. And he said, well, you know, there's, we had, if you don't do this, blah, 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 whatever. And I just, instead of, if he would have said, hey man, send us the cylinders, we'll send you a new set. I, I would put them on and I would go forward. Yeah. There was nothing about him helping me out. So I just said, hey, okay, cool. Just trash those. I'm going to take the, you know, and so, build them a, a whole different setup out of the parts that I already had yeah. and just try to make it as minimal money wise on my end, but still give him a, a so really that's cool. So this is what sucks about this story right here because Mark's dealt with this too. And I've known three other shops that's dealt with this, right? Is it, it always sucks because the middleman is the one that takes all the heat, right? Mm-hmm. This company up here, um, I think we've already said the name, so I'm not going to say it again. So if you didn't catch that, fucking wrap it up. Um, <laughs> This company makes a product, and they already have like a uh, a designated amount of faulty things that they're allowed to put out before they do like a recall or yeah, something yeah. like that. They're yep. that big of a company. Yep. But what happens is, let's say that you are the shop. You put that on. Or, I mean, let's not say that you actually are the shop yeah. that puts it on. Um, if they do warranty that, you're still having to fucking do the labor again yeah, for free. Yeah, all, all the companies that I deal with um, – you know, through drag specialties and all that stuff, they're all like they'll warranty their parts, but labor's out the window. So like, no matter what, you have to eat the labor on it. And and the bad thing is, it's not like you're gonna, you know, some customers might be cool and be like, hey man, you know, uh, I know it's not your fault, so give me a bill. But they're not gonna do that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they're gonna want their bike back free of charge and fixed, which I get it. But it's fair. Like it's it, it puts the the brick and mortar shop in a very very shitty situation yeah. to to just navigate the waters of being in business and, and doing performance parts. And, and like I said, man, in in the two two and a half years that I've had like this shop open, like on my own, this is the first time that I've had to have like an issue like that. So I'm 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 okay with it, I guess. You know, yeah. at that point, it could be a lot worse. But yeah, it just kind of sucks. You got to really pick and choose. You know, who who you use for parts, who you deal with, you know, even the customer side of it, you know, like it was probably a, it, it may have been a bad decision on my part to build that kind of motor for that customer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's possible. W- once it leaves the shop, like you can tell them whatever you want. You could tell them, hey man, this is the break-in procedure. This is what you got to do. Oil change at this many miles, all this stuff. It doesn't matter. That doesn't mean they're gonna listen to you. Yeah, right? you know you what I'm saying. You just hope they do. You just hope they you do. Know? You yeah. hope they have some common and if sense. If something happens, you know, you just hope they're gonna be truthful with you. And yeah. and like I said, I you know, guy's a good nobody customer. that just drops three or four grand on something like that is gonna be truthful with you. He, he spent, to be honest with you, he spent six grand with me because yeah. I did a bunch of other stuff. The bike was pretty clapped out. I mean, I did a bunch of maintenance stuff to the bike, and you know, he spent a good chunk of money on it. And it was the the what he spent with me was over the value of the motorcycle. You know, and 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 right then and there, I probably you want to sell it. <laughs> right then and there, I probably should have been like, you know what, man, maybe this kind of motor, you know, isn't really what you need. You yeah, know? but I mean, that's so easy to get to that point now. I mean, you can get you a nice ass fucking, you know, ninety nine to 04 DX right now for fucking four grand in yeah. some places, and easily drop four, five, six, seven, oh, yeah. eight grand in that yeah. bitch real quick. Yep, that was kind of like what Bert was saying yesterday. Throwing a, a three thousand dollar transmission and their old shovel like sometimes it's not about like that's like their bike yeah you know it might have a little bit more sentimental value so for them to throw a little bit more money at it Mm -hmm. and everything you know it's it's what they want to do you know yep we don't always make the best financial decisions (laughs) we're motorcycle people (laughs) yeah Yeah. as we're all sitting here being like oh shit i'm that guy that fucking spent way too much money (laughs) on my shit yeah, for sure. We all, yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing that sucks is because, I mean, there's when I was in the big wheel thing and I used to do like a lot of certain parts. It got to a point where I was having to warranty so many parts and eat like picking up dudes off the highway. Yeah, you know, warranty things, and the company would take care of it, but they weren't cutting me 
any kind of checks. Yeah. Or any, they were like, hey, man, here's a couple free sets of air ride for all the ones you've been fixing. I got a shop. I have a shop down the street from me. Um, I've known the guys for a long time. That's all they do is big wheel baggers. Mm-hmm. So anybody that comes to me looking for any kind, like any bit of that, I just send them right down there because I don't want to deal with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I, those parts, mm-hmm. unfortunately, tend to be the ones that fail like all yeah. that shit you know all of those bikes are the ones kind of falling yeah, usually, apart a little bit more usually usually in the performance bikes the only things that, that become an issue is the thing is that we ride or we um, Steve rides these kind of bikes very <laughs> uh, very aggressively we right? all push them past the limits yeah. that they're supposed to be I mean be. I, I ride my shit hard but like you know yesterday we were talking to Bert and we were asking about the transmissions and shit like I'm not like a clutch dumper you know what I mean like I'm not the dude that every time the light fucking yeah. hits green, I'm fucking letting the cl- out the clutch full throttle. You oh, know what I mean? Until tomorrow. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Y'all are going to have to catch up. So uh, <laughs> I might be changing my stance on that tomorrow. But but no, like I'm I'm really I'm really an easy dude on my bike because I know how much traveling I do. Yeah. And I'm really trying to uh, enjoy it, but not. I, I'm I'm almost forty, man. So like I'm looking at life a little bit more responsible. I think a little bit. Even though I should be at home working right now, but I'm still kind of thinking more responsibly. I'm in the same boat, dude. I, like I said, man, I passed up on a bunch of stuff this year, and I should be at the shop doing stuff, or I should be home, whatever, you know. But yeah, there's, there's certain. Yeah, exactly. When are you going to MMI? We need to fuck around and just go out there. And I don't need to go to MMI. They just teach you torque specs. Yeah, but you specs. know what? Everybody I sit down with, everyone I sit down with, man. I, actually, I heard MMI. Um, Maybe since, Mark will hire you after that. You know, I already told Mark to hire me. Great dude, man. Come come work for me. Come on, dude. Okay. Get, get that unemployment. Out that way I can pay you less. And <laughs> Easy now. Don't tell everybody my tricks. Go ahead. Mark's a good dude, man. I, I, I've, I met him a couple years ago, actually, at the drag show. Yeah. That, that's one of the dudes that, like, I feel like we're in kind of like the, the same boat. A little quiet, you know, like, he does his thing, you know, he puts out a bunch of fucking really nice bikes but same thing like when we talk and we we talk every so often you know we're on the same page with like how we do things how we build stuff how you know torque torque specs specs and and dude dude, i i have a couple grand in 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 you know just tools for that shit you know what i'm saying i was working in mark's shop one time and he was getting all pissed off because he couldn't torque like a quarter twenty bolt for an exhaust bracket because the <laughs> torque wrench wouldn't fit. And I'm like, dude, just, probably spent like eight hundred bucks on the snap-on truck up. to get like you know the the right tool for it. That's the shit that bothers me too, man. Honestly, is people don't realize like some of these shops out there, man. Some of these guys have a ton of money and tools and knowledge and stuff that they don't you know get recognition for. You know what I'm saying, yeah. like. These guys got some crazy, crazy money and tools. I mean, I, I, dude, I got 20 years of tools. Like, you know, it costs a lot of money to do the shit that we do, and that people don't realize that, you know? Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, it, one of the things that, that's definitely going to be changing for a lot of people in the industry in the next months is uh, people are going to have to start paying tax on all their online purchases, Right, so Did now you know about that because no. he just told me about this the other day. Yeah, so apparently uh, I'm they like just, the worst business guy you could probably. Well, I, come I think Dude, I, don't pay I think at the shit, table like, I'm the worst this is, business this guy. This is like all online sales, right? So all online sales are going to where you're going to have to pay tax now. So uh, you know, before like say you wanted to buy an SNS 111, right? Yep. And uh, you wanted to just go to Revzilla or some shit like that, or maybe even direct to SNS if you can. I don't know if you can. Yeah. If so you, you you buy the sixty. Three, four, five hundred dollar motor, and then you're just paying shipping. If you know, you don't live in the same state. You yeah. don't live in the same state. Yeah. But now, um, it's going to be to where you're going to have to pay the tax. So, uh, you know, my buddy uh, Aaron Mid- Midwest Grinder was telling me, Midwestern Grinder. I always say Midwest. Um, he's he's like my uh, the guy that's helping me get out of my financial woes. Um, basically, like certain states are going to have to. Uh, or not, it's like this. So, like, if you sell something like, like, Steve, you have your online store, when people from that state purchase from you, the program, I believe, will already will, will add that tax for so, their state. Oh, their state. Their state. So, like, I'm Michigan, 6%, but, like, what? I think it's their state or okay. the state that you're in. I, I don't remember which one. But all I know is that it's, like, like a thing that doesn't, 
I think now I'm trying to fucking re say this thing as accurate as I can remember. I've had like two whiskeys now. <laughs> um, so like, and then he told me then this I don't know. This is me just completely just saying I heard you know. Right. But he said that like uh, if you to sell to California now, you have to have a tax ID for California. Meaning, like, say, if you have an online store for, gotcha. and you're here and you want to sell things to people in California, you'll have to file for a tax ID in California or some. I don't fucking I don't hey, know. Bitch, I sell this shit ton of side covers in South California. Yeah. Dude, I'm so I'm so like I'm, I'm so far behind in all that stuff to where literally like I'm just focused on. Like I said, man, I'm trying to keep my lights on <laughs> a, a building, a, you know, like just keep my no. lifestyle the way it was you know people bitch at me all the time they're like dude you need to do this and that and this i'm like i can't keep up with the shit i gotta do right now let alone trying to like you know do online sales to other states with other shit i'm like dude, well I yeah so what i'm saying is i think that what's going to happen is it's going to force more people to look at their local places yeah. to start spending their money on, on bike parts rather than just going to the because you know there's this thing that i think people do right like they think that if they order, if they send SNS on Instagram a message and it's like, hey, man, I'm about to order this uh, power package from you guys. They're like, oh, word? Yeah. Hot, bro, I'm glad yeah. you hit me up. Here's 5% yeah. off. Yeah. Like as if somebody that's. But, but the, the, the reality of it is, is that there's a lot of places out there that do hook a lot of people up for, you know, just random reasons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, fuck, you got to compete with. Just about everything nowadays to try to, Very true. you know, yep. kind of sucks. But, it, it, I mean, it's it's cool because it puts, you know, other guys are getting stuff and, and getting into the industry or, you know, putting together stuff. But it just it sucks for some shops that, you know, like they rely on, you know. I think the tire thing was probably the worst thing that ever happened because people, tires can, especially now that we're all running 18-inch rear bagger wheels from factory. Yeah. Those tires are expensive. expensive. Yeah. I, I can't compete with online tire yeah, prices. Yeah, nobody can. I get I get people coming they, in all the time. They sell in volume, so it's Big like time. they literally will just mark it up whatever their cost is plus five they'll make, to ten they'll bucks. Make, they'll make five or ten bucks off you the know, tire. But when they sell a hundred of them, then it like I it, it doesn't it sucks for you. I sell I, I do very very well with drag specialties. Like for a small little one person shop, I I yeah. fucking kill it with drag specialties. And even with all my, you know, um, you, you know, I'm, I'm like a platinum dealer and all this bullshit that I get, I get better dealer pricing yeah. on stuff. Even with that, yeah, you get I'm your not life. even, I'm not even close to some of these online prices. I get guys all the time where like it's, they give me a quote like in 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 writing. 40 bucks less than my dealer cost per tire. I'm like, so you want me to spend 80 bucks to have me do the tires for you? It's like, bro, I, I can't do that. Yeah, but at the same you time. You can't match it? No, it's you're, it's $40. I have to spend money to like, get I'm you. I'm literally losing, losing money. Losing money. You know, like, and it sucks for that, but at the end of the day, you can just hand them tire spoons and be like, hey, I'll help you. I, honestly, I, like, I, I say, I love the, if you want, you can take a picture of me doing this <laughs> and you can like turn it into a cardboard thing and say, hey, look, you're going to talk to Jace. <laughs> and and I'm, I, I, I believe, like I get the whole idea. I mean, trust me, I deal with the, uh, I deal with everybody all the time that, that wants to deal with the, um, you know, the price shopping. And, yeah. and I'm guilty of it as well. Like, yeah. if I'm buying a fucking new TV, I'm at Best Buy going, like, hey, Walmart's got this motherfucker for $10 less. But, but there's also there's also not a guy, like, you know, in your home local town making TVs yeah. that you could go buy a TV from. Like, we're we're stuck with that shit. Like, I, I get yeah. price shopping on stuff like that, you know. But, like, when it comes to, like, you know, cars, bikes... Handmade goods, paint jobs, stuff like that. It's like you start price shopping and, and kind of doing that kind of stuff. It's like, dude, like you're you're killing people on on some of that stuff, you know? Yeah, that's that's for sure. That's that's the good thing about like uh, for for your business. Like, I know a Yelp review or an online review is much more important than it is for me. Like, I I kind of laugh. I'm like, dude, it'd be so dope if I like had the worst reviews in America. <laughs> like, everybody's like, this dude never answers this phone. Like. I, blah, probably, blah. I I don't pay attention to that stuff. I, I should. I, I every so often, like a couple of my friends will like say something. Like I actually had somebody like a couple of weeks ago say, "Man, 
Like I looked you up on Google or Yelp or whatever. You got like some legit reviews and this and that. You got one person that like bitched you out. I'm like, really? I'm like, damn, I got to see what, like, what happened. <laughs> they were like, oh, he didn't get back with me. I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, that's every day. I'm like, damn, yeah. I had to have a bunch of bad reviews at that point. Yeah. There was, a, there was another motorcycle podcast that I heard one time that they were they would read dealer reviews that were just left on You the listen thing. to other motorcycle podcasts? Oh, I thought you were my friend. Oh, man. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I didn't they, they literally, they just have a bunch of, like, dealer reviews and they read it on the podcast. Dude, some of these were fucking hilarious. Like, you can hear the person person like as they're typing it out that they're starting to realize that they're the dumbass they're like i had a problem and then i went back and then i went to him a second time and the third and then oh man i should probably just quit going there <laughs> that's what man it does suck man but i understand i understand it's, it's a very it's very difficult to fucking figure this shit out because you know, on right now, like now and like at your bike nights, most of your cool people, the cool customers, the guys that that fuck with you. Who's the fuck pulling up? Um, I think it's the guy that owns this place. He's got to be quiet. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so it is cool when like you you surround yourself with so many people because they all dig the type of bikes that we're doing and doing shit like this. But then you just get those random dudes that that may be into this, but they're into this on a much more professional level. And they just have that level of professionalism that, that you know, gets lost. I mean, it, I think bikers, like, which I would consider you, like, you're fucking here. You rode here. You're doing this shit. This is biker shit, man. We just have a – we're more more chill with our, our people that like us. Like, yeah, and, and honestly, like, kind of earlier when you are talking about, like, you know, reasons of leaving the dealership and stuff like that, that was a little part of it too, man. Like, you know, these dealerships, they have, you know – thousands of people that come through there thousands of customers i mean i was just talking to my boy you know that at the dealership that i worked at you know they're they've been open since you know, a couple years before i started there so they're probably going on 18 19 years being in business at that at that place they have a hundred thousand they're, they're like on a hundred thousand of work order numbers yeah you know like that's how many bikes came through that service department a hundred thousand fucking bikes so like you you take the percentages there's going to be a lot of shitty customers with a hundred thousand people like oh, yeah. me being a one-man shop just a small little mom and pop place like i'm well like i have way less customers so like hopefully my percentage of shitty customers is way, way less, less you know yeah. what i'm saying like i've been pretty lucky man i haven't i i, I honestly I, I dealt with one shitty customer since i've been open that's it that's good. Yeah. So, like, I mean, you fire them. You know what the deal is? It's not I, yeah, I don't have to. Like, that's the cool thing is that you know, at my place, like, if they don't like me, they don't have to come back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if something happened, they don't have to come back. They'll, you know, like I found myself like when I was chasing money all the time, I found myself finding, uh, you know, being in positions where I was taking in jobs from people I knew were going to be problems. Yeah. You know, like, you can read them like when you're hanging out with them or like when they drop it off and. If they immediately start spouting off on their other experiences with other other shops, you have to kind of like raise an eyebrow, like, okay, you're talking a lot of shit about something that's so real. Twelve people fucked you over. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. All right. The world's what's, out to get you. What's the common uh, yeah. thing there? The common denominator yeah. is fucking you suck, bro. <laughs> but yeah, no. And the last time I, I had a one, the last shitty customer I have, I got it on video when he when he called me to bitch me out. It's I, I'll show you. It's uh, fucking. Yeah. You seen it? I I remember it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's fucking so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you, but the you know what the thing that sucked though is that like when I did this dude's bike, so when he dropped it off, he dropped it, another friend of mine from Ohio drove down with him. He brought his bike as well, and my other friend was super chill. We we done business before. We we're at the bar. We're catching up, having a good time. So imagine. You know, we're, this is the bar. You're the bartender. So Steve's my buddy. That we're good friends. And this is the customer that's bringing his bike. Doesn't know me. And we're like, oh man, how's things been, man? How was Sturgis last year? I didn't get to go. Blah blah blah. Whatever. And we're talking. We're talking bikes. And he just like sticks his phone in my face from around my head. He goes, check out my LEDs on my bike. And I'm like, and I, and I look at him as I'm turning around, like, cool. <laughs> And like I'm, I'm at a point where I want to fucking slap this dude, man. To be honest with you, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I told you, man. He was kind of fucking weird, blah blah blah. And I'm like, all right, man. And you know, this is the thing: is this dude's dropping off his bike build. 
or his bike paint job, right? And it's a big job. And um, that was the biggest red flag when this dude couldn't, like, he his his whole existence was the fact that he has money to spend on his bike, yeah. and his bike is kind of nice, and so that made him feel, uh, like cool enough to sit with us at this table and have this beer. You know what I mean? Every every time like I take a job in that I knew I shouldn't have taken in, I'm always like, oh yeah, next time, you know, I, I gotta, you know, I can't do this shit. You gotta anymore. look at these red flags. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. like, and 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 the the bad thing is, is I, you know, it. Like you said, it, you're chasing money. Like you, yeah. you don't want to like turn stuff down. And you don't want to piss people off. You, you don't, don't, telling people no hurts, man. It honestly, like this year has been pretty fucked up. So like you know, COVID. The the I had the shop closed for I don't know a couple months. Once other shops around me kind of started opening up, I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna open back up." Yeah. But I was kind of like still under the radar a little bit. I I was already busy from what I had going on and then I got busy from the weather changing and, yeah. and stuff being back open back up I turned my phones down to like either off or, or just ringing twice and I was like oh shit I'm like dude I'm gonna probably I'm probably missing out on you know all this work and this and that money and I got to the point where I was like dude like I don't even need the phones on like if 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 I if work's gonna come in it's gonna come in whether the phones are on or whether I'm there or not like work's gonna be there now I have to be the smart one and choose like who I should yeah. and shouldn't be working on stuff. And there's guys like the the good thing is is like you know I I have guys in in, in the area that you know I work with all the time that are like OG guys, dudes that have been in the industry for a long time. They tell me all the time like, dude, fuck that, say no, say no, say no. Yeah. And these are guys that I should be listening to, and I don't. So you know, it's like let me give you an example. I was down there with my boy down in Houston right before a couple weeks before I came up here or up to do all the stuff that we're doing now and I was at my buddy's Hellbent shop uh, Hellbent Customs they got a little they, they work on some bikes and shit and uh, their customer there is one of their cool homies like he's he's cool but his level of particularness raised a flag to me that made me think about it it's like this dude was doing a soft tail like an OG soft tail you know chromed out yep. but you know, like, Kuriaki makes a lot of covers to yeah, put yeah. on his bike, right? So this dude was kind of like, he was asking questions, but in, in, in my terms, he was complaining about the fitment of this cover that he bought from Kuriaki. Yeah. And I was listening to him bitch about it. And just knowing the nature of putting those type of covers and those type of items on your bike, that fitment is pretty universal, meaning that it doesn't fit perfect. Yeah. Now... You can make it fit perfect. This is where it gets funny, right? So it doesn't fit perfect because he bought this bolt-on cover. You put the bolt-on cover on, it fits as good as it can. You give it to the customer, the customer's like, that looks like shit. You did a shitty job. You're a shitty mechanic. Now, you could have put that cover on and pulled out a grinder and grinded all the welds out behind it yeah. and smoothed everything out so that it fit on like a goddamn you know, precision glove, right? Yep. And then... You know, repowder coated the, the the swing arm just so that it doesn't raw metal behind it or yeah. whatever the case may be, and then you could have handed him a bill for another four hundred or five hundred dollars on top of that little chrome cover. Yeah, that sixty dollar cover that he paid for. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the thing that sucks about a lot of times when it comes to like like shops. Like that's the level of detail that you're wanting, but you don't understand the level of detail behind the cover that you that that has to go into into play sometimes. Yep. And people, and that's the thing, man. People don't understand because, like, it's a sixty dollars cover. You, you hand them a bill for five hundred bucks, six hundred bucks, whatever it is. To install it. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They they think it takes ten minutes because they go on the website and it says you know installs. And, Install. And, you can do it yourself. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but like, same thing. Like, I, I I've kind of been lucky enough to where like that was a shit like unfortunately that's a lot of stuff that dealerships do you know chrome covers you know bolt on it pays stuff. the bills it pays the bills yeah. i've been lucky enough to not really have to deal with that stuff at my place because like i, I do have parts and i i have stuff in stock but i don't stock that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but luckily like people kind of know me in the area to where they know like kind of the stuff that i do and what i'm good at so they know not to come to me to install you know 
LED strip lighting. Yeah, that's not what dude. I do. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's other places I can do that. Do you tell people no when they come in and ask for that? Yeah. What's that like? <laughs> it's, it's what's that scenario like? It, on the shitty thing is, it's uncomfortable on my end because, like, I like I said, man, I'm not. They like think a, it's so cool. I'm right? not a dickhead, and yes. I don't want to be a dickhead. But the problem is, is like, I'm gonna say no to that kind of stuff, and I feel like they think I'm like, you know kind of coming down on them about it mm -hmm. you know like oh i don't want to do that shitty you know yeah lights or whatever and that's not the case it's just i have to explain to them like hey like they're gonna they're gonna fuck up over time and i'm not warranting it like yeah. i just don't want to do it i can't eat the cost like if i tell you it's gonna cost you know two hours to do this and then it comes back six months from now like i don't want to deal with that shit yeah the best place to get leds is go to your local rally and find yeah. a dude and just let dude Sturgis on, on Lazelle yeah. Street. There, there's like seven fucking trucks out there waiting to install them for oh, like yeah. fifty bucks, dude. Yeah, yeah. blue, and purple. We got yeah, the whole rainbow. The greatest know. thing is when you they can come change back, it from your phone. They come back afterwards and they're like, "Yeah, I had these lights installed in Sturgis. Can you? They, they don't work. Take them back. <laughs> Go back, <laughs> dude." <laughs> You know, like or, hey, I need to get my fucking. You know, I need to. I need to. I got a rocker box leak, and the fucking t bottom of the tank's got like forty streaks of LED yeah, glued dude. on. Right. Yeah, and it's like ripping the paint off too as you peel it. <laughs> and those are things too. Like I try to, and that's the good thing about me. You know, not having a service writer, I try to go out there and look. You know, before I quote somebody, like, hey, dude, you got lights and chrome covers everywhere. This like one hour job is now going to be a four hour job because I have to remove all this stuff, fix it, and then put it all back together. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it? Yes or no? No? Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. You know? It's kind of one of those deals too, right? It's at the end of the day, it's like you're going to eat your own cost if yeah. you don't, you know, figure that out yourself, you know, so. Well, the, the, the more that people start realizing that like, like it's, it's not, not every business out here is Walmart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not... Just because you're in business for yourself doesn't mean that you have like fucking thousands of dollars in the bank to 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 just be like okay yeah I'll just pay you for like you not being super satisfied with your LED yeah. kit you know what I mean dude we we literally were just talking about this today too like I don't know how many people come up to me all the time they're like yo how come you don't have like a you know F three fifty on fucking twenty two and a half inch wheels with your rap job and because it's got a motherfucking van because it fucking costs a hundred grand. <laughs> what do you mean? You like to write it off? Like no, no, that's not how this shit works, dude. I still gotta buy that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Like dude, I got a fucking bullshit van with my logo on the side of it, dude. Yeah, his, his van's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of pissed you didn't get to go uh, see his shop. Like his shop, you know, walking in Clem Speed Shop, it's one of the cleanest shops. That I've like ever walked in. Yeah. Fucking nice floors. Yeah, I just had to chase setup. his ass all the way to fucking New York. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, dude. Like, I've been, I've been I did want to see. Stuff. Like, I, I'm a, I'm a I'm a big. I love the I love these cities, especially these eastern cities that are more um, older. You know what I mean? They've have they got a lot more history and uh, shit takes place there. Like you know, with Detroit being the uh, the hub of Motor City, mo man. Motor City. You know dude, what I mean? That's so, why I like. If if you if if you're from Michigan or like South, I mean, the whole anywhere, state feels the, like it is the whole state, but yeah. like Southeast Michigan, like where we're at, dude. Everybody's got a car, a bike, a boat. It's a snowmobile. Something. Everyone's got something like some type of toy, mother, and they yeah. all fucking want to go fast. They all want to beat their buddies. They all want to have the, you know, the the macked out, you know, whatever it is. Like yeah. that's just what. It's wild from like the west side of the state where I live to like east side by Detroit. Like how many just like brand new Challengers, and oh, brand dude. new Mustangs, and brand new Dodge trucks. You know, because they're in the Motor City. Where Don't get me all started this on that made. shit either. And like just how much of those are on the road compared to like our side of the state? So what? What auto manufacturer has stayed in uh, in? Uh in, they're, in, all they're all there. They're all there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they just all still have their they, own plants. Yeah, they all still have a shit ton of plants everywhere. But the they just like. You know when shit hit the fan years ago they just outsource stuff more and like they like a lot of like the second and third tier like you know designers and machine shops dude that's another thing you go a hundred a hundred feet around my shop and there's like two machine shops like they're everywhere every corner there's a machine shop they're they're either you know working for the big three or 
it's some type of like the shop next to me they build the the baddest or they used to they they build the baddest like old mopar hemi motors on the planet mm -hmm. like the two dudes that run that building they're the fastest mopar guys on the planet they're these old you know 60 year old dudes that have been doing this shit for you know their entire yeah. life you know like pro stock hemi shit from back in the 60s and 70s like mm -hmm. race cars everywhere like that's just our area that's what it's about you know it's kind of similar to you know jimmy at hbi's got a cool setup down there like that's their little hub we have like our little motor city hub like you know in detroit too mm -hmm. Yeah, with like muscle cars and everything. Like yep. our, between like, you know, Indiana and Michigan, like we're built on yeah. fucking horsepower. You know, yeah. like we like cars and we like I have my where my shop's at, the the street that I'm on is like one of the busiest streets in probably in Michigan. Like, you know, it's a busy street. I have thousands tens of thousands of cars that pass my shop mm -hmm. every single day. We joke because we just sit out there for hours there's a there's a light you know one block over from that light to the front of my shop is a thousand foot on the dot mm -hmm. and every day there's people racing down there <laughs> challengers scat packs must you know coyote motors just <laughs> ripping dude like the location of your shop is awesome because he's on like Grashit, which Grashit's like a um, directional road you yeah know, like a split but it's like right where his shop is and like the road winds up so it's like right in front of the <laughs> shop it's like four, four lanes. lanes so like when he has parties at his shop like we might go out front and just go bang some oh, wheelies yeah. and you know get cops to come up yeah. on us and shit so, like that so last year when we did the the anniversary party we had actually a couple guys from new york uh nikki and uh pete pete they came out and these dudes are insane on their bikes dude mm -hmm. just rip wheelies non-stop and they're you know used to this shit like yeah. city stuff so they come to detroit and they got like somewhat open roads yeah but they still have the new york mentality so they're you know wheelies and i'm on a one like technically in front of my shop it's southbound grass shit, so it's one way yeah so they'll rip past and then they'll come the wrong way, rip past, <laughs> do some, you know, uh, circle burnouts, go back the other way, come up the sidewalk, and it's like, all right, we're like, you gotta chill for a little bit. Like, this isn't New York, like, right, yeah. you know? No, I had that, uh, I think it was at that party, you know, try to rip some shitty wheelies yeah. out front. But then it's like turned around and I was coming the wrong way down the road. <laughs> and like, I think I, I jumped up and there's a grass, like a little bit of grass, and like I took the grass path. Me and a cop just locked eyes. Like, <laughs> that. I'm like, oh shit. And then he just kept going. I was, I was like, like, all I'm, right. So I, don't feel, I don't feel like doing paperwork tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. The, the building next to me, these dudes, like... Uh, it's like an auction, right? Well, mm -hmm. they, they, they auction. They have like a car auction in the lot in front because they have a bunch of property. But the actual building itself is like a hot rod shop. They have dealt with the city for years. They're like part of the city board. Yeah. And, and the old dude... Tom, he like loves me. He comes over all the time. He's like, you need anything? I got you. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm having a party on Saturday. He's like, I got you. Calls his, you know, makes his phone calls. Cops stay away. Like, you know, I think uh, about five o'clock on shift change, cop shows up across the street. So I call Tom. Hey, yo, Tom, there's a cop over there. The phone wasn't even hung up yet, and the dude pulls out. He's like, "Oh, it's shift change." He didn't, he didn't know what was going on. Don't worry about it. You know, he like get, he didn't get the memo. That yeah, yeah. Be doing that's lawless. cool. Like those dudes, uh, they they're just looking for a reason now to uh, use that power they have built over the years. Basically, dude, that's that's seniority, man. Seniority. Yeah. They 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 do something with like the stolen vehicle unit or whatever. Yeah, to help them out with all that stuff. So they the city helps them out, man. Yeah, it's fun, man. I, I man, I wish I would have. I'd love to see Detroit. I've, yeah. I've watched uh, the only thing on Detroit I've seen other than RoboCop, which was Dallas, <laughs> was um, <laughs> that's our connection. That in there, right? <laughs> uh, I watched like an Anthony Bourdain that he did for on Detroit was pretty interesting, where he went around and saw, you know, of course there. Are, that's one thing I'm starting to notice about all these places. Um, going to Chicago, even being here, like you, you grow up, especially in Texas, man. Like everything east, these big cities is just like death around every corner you know what i mean gangs and violence and they'll rob you in the street which i know happens because it happens in yeah, dallas too yeah. but you know riding around south, south side of chicago i'm like oh 
people don't get shot here all day long. It's pretty chill, you know? It's, like I said, man, It's it's got its bad spots. You just got to know, like, where to go, where not to go, when to go, you know, shit like that. It's like any city, man. Like, but, it, you know, it was way grimier back in the day. Like I said, man, yeah. it's, it's, it's changed now. But it's definitely, like, it's still cool because we can, you know, kind of go to detroit and ride like we ride out here like i said yeah. a little lawlessness and a little kind of acting like an idiot and not have to worry about you know getting in trouble because realistically dude there's bigger fish to fry detroit pd doesn't want to fuck around with us they, what's they that got, isn't there like a building there that used to be like some big thing that was going to be great and then to be coming a like a abandoned building it was going to be like some big the, the, the that's silver, all of detroit the silver dome? no no <laughs> dude get out of here with that shit no <laughs> the Silver uh, Dome is where the Detroit Lions play. Yeah, yeah, they oh. fucking... <laughs> well, there was this, like, uh, this thing I've seen it on a lot of different... There's two buildings down there that you might be thinking of. Train One, station. the train station, which Ford bought. I think that was the train station. Or it's, um... What's the other hey, place? Hey, tell them to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Hey, shut the fuck up over there. <laughs> We're trying to do a podcast in here. Don't no, 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 grab it. Don't no, no, get some crafts. New York Scotty's back there. Get some Cheetos. <laughs> yeah we had a couple dude there's honestly there's so many like big buildings um the packard plant yes. could it, it could have been the packard plant that you were they saw i think it was the train station i think i remembered it uh, so being something station, like it was going to be a kind of spot for people to come to and then it just like did, didn't happen or they something. were going to then ford actually bought it and started redoing stuff they're gonna have like part of their headquarters there and, and a school and training and all this shit but you know with once again fucking 2020 covid fucking you know mm. put a halt to all that shit didn't like the packard plant have like this big crazy like uh walk over like yeah that collapse that, that just collapses yeah. i think yeah. i did saw that too yeah. i think i saw that was that this year or last year uh last year last year yeah. yeah i guess i've never seen it i've just seen so what's crazy there. about that place is this place is like like hundreds of thousands of square feet like just yeah. size wise and it's been abandoned for years and years and years and there's like one dude that like lives in there and basically is like the security guy, like the, the gatekeeper for the Packard plant. And there's still like car parts in there. So like people that like are trying to build like the, or restore these old Packards or, you know, build something, they find out like, hey man, if you get a hold of this guy and he lets you in, you might be able to find this, you know, hood emblem or whatever. And he'll like literally like let you in and dig around and kind of pick something out if there's something there that's still available it's it's that's wild dude that's it's, wild it's yeah. it's it, it's absolutely insane that's pretty cool though yeah and those are the places like where the packard plan is those are like the hood places that like you know if we want to go like street race or if we want to go like screw around or you know whatever you, that's where you go mm -hmm. because you're not getting in trouble down there they're not you know they're not yeah, looking they're not for you. patrolling yeah dude yeah that, like I said, man, that that shit is uh, the history behind it is very fascinating because, you know, as a as a I don't know if everybody really looks at this, but, you know, as a kid, as you grow up, man, you start seeing like think about those areas. These things are <laughs> louder <laughs> as they're trying to be quiet. <laughs> they're cooking pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, These mics are too good. They're just picking up on everything. Yeah. So I like, think of it like. Like the neighborhood you grew up on, you see like new new growth, new buildings, like new restaurants, whatever the case may be, and like you see it get built, and you you know as a as a younger guy, you're excited like fuck yeah, there's a there's a new fucking place to go, whatever, and then you see it kind of run its course for ten years, and then they build like a new spot across the street, yeah. and then this place becomes vacant, and now now everybody's across the street. That's and it's always. Like what what I'm getting at is like in my town of Waxhatchee where I live, there's a there's a high there, it, we're live on Interstate 35 and 287, two major highways, right, or two decent sized highways, and so one side of the highways is kind of older, right? It's been there for a while. Yeah. They've, they've built a lot of shopping centers and uh, whatnot. On the other side, it's all new, and what's happening is the build the the businesses that were in the old ones just went to the new ones yeah so we didn't get like new restaurants or it's anything just, it's the same shit just it's the same there. shit across the highway now and now the old ones are, are kind of uh you know some of them are vacant but then the rest of them are just kind of like their mom and pop shops that you know they there's not enough income coming in to reface the uh 
the the buildings and make them look nice yeah. and shit like that. So it's like the I guess the the good thing about Detroit and like what's kind of cool about it is you know it's basically on the Detroit River butted up against Canada. Like you look across the Detroit River and there's Canada. They can only like basically they have to build out. You know they can redo some stuff down there, but. They're, they're basically just building out and out and out and just further away. So yeah. it's almost getting to the point where, like, downtown Detroit's built up. Now they're going a little further out. And, like, at a, at a certain point, like, where we live, kind of in the suburbs, it's already nice and, and built up. It's just going to, like, meet and going to be one big new kind City, of thing. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, which is cool because, like, you know, here you're stuck. You have to build up. Yeah. back home in Detroit we build out so like it's Same just gonna keep does, going yeah. and going and going but they're, they're stuck like we only you can only build out you know two ways you can't go into the, into the river in Canada so yeah. you just keep building out you know yeah that makes it a little bit easier in some ways um, yeah it's kind of weird like what would it be like to live on, on you know I, I did the podcast with uh, Kyle who lives on the border of in St. Louis yeah. so he's like on the Illinois side yep like, what's it like when the down the middle of the city is on the border of a state? And now I'm looking at it goes like into the next state. You know? Yeah, it goes yeah. To the next state a little bit. So some people might live in Illinois, but work in St. Louis. They have to make the the jump across the. I guess it's the Mississippi. I always there. wonder that shit with like uh, like crime and stealing shit. Yeah, like I talked to like Kyle before. It's like they would people would steal cars and if you get across the border you know it's like the jurisdiction doesn't they do that cross with they it. do that in the city like yeah. most most of the suburbs outside of the city have like a pretty high crime rate because most of the dudes come from the city steal a car do whatever and then go back into the city yep cops don't want to like go like you know if you're like a, a city cop outside of detroit you don't want to, you know, go into the city for that shit. So they yeah. just, you know, look, whatever. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Like, it's gone. It's Sorry. gone. I mean, we get, like, you know, lately, like, there's been a big rash of, like, stolen bikes and stuff. And they're like, yeah, it's in the city. It's 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 gone. It's like, well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the shit's already on eBay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Cut me my check. I guess I'll be all right with it, you know. <laughs> Where, where, like, you know, as you've been doing this for a little over two years now, like, where do you really want to push the Clem Speed Shop going forward? You know what I mean? Like, is it just like go with emotions now, or you have like plans to? Dude, honestly, I don't know. Like I said, man, I'm kind of like a bad business guy. I like feel like, uh, like I, I, I want to like keep growing and stuff, but I also don't want to get to the point where like, um, you know, I need people and this and that. Like, I like just having like a small little thing man i don't know I, would, would you be like to have one other employee or? i would love to have i would love to have either a a, a mechanic that's like a, a good skill level Competent, yeah. yeah you know like someone i can trust and just let him do his thing or i would like to have somebody up front you know dealing with like try to build like the parts thing a little bit bigger you know what i'm yeah. saying because there's good Maybe money in parts and the books and that type of shit. Yeah, I don't know. Like it, it's it's messed up, man. I, I I had 15 years at the dealership, and at a dealership you have like, you know, one work order. There's 10 people involved in one yeah. work order. So like that it's was very thorough. Yeah, yeah. So like that was where I had like an issue to where I I I wanted to be like I wanted to talk to the customer. I wanted to look at the customer's bike. I wanted to write the bike up. I wanted to order the parts because you know someone may order parts wrong or someone may put labor yeah you want to know the customer because that customer might probably probably lean more towards what you like yeah you know so like part of me getting into my shop was to be able to deal with like one person start to finish on my own instead of having like be like this part's broke here's option a here's option b here's option yes C. and 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 guess what if i order the parts wrong it's my fuck up not you know i not four other people at the dealer or whatever you know so like it it just kind of i like that aspect of it and i feel like if everyone wants to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and i feel like it, when you get to that point you just start running into the same problems that you had before you know so you're just like i just want to get better and better yeah and better. like i I'm, I'm tough on myself because I see and unfortunately like as good as social media is and as cool mm -hmm. as it is you see other shops and you're like damn homeboy's got 
you know, this and that and all this cool shit. And it's like, fuck, man, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, how come I'm not at that level? Yeah. But it also, like, from from opening up to where I'm at now has only been two and a half years. Yeah. Some of these guys that I'm looking up to are 10, 12, 15 years in the game, you know? So, like, I got to also think, like, hey, dude, I'm only two years into this. Like, just slow down, yeah. fucking do what you got to do. It's kind of hard to think that way sometimes because, uh, you know, once you start, once you put your, your fucking name on it, yeah. you know what I mean? It becomes this, uh, it's like looking at your your child almost. Yeah. So like you, you. I'm happy where I'm at, dude. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Potato chips and shit. God damn. <laughs> Fucking bikers, man. Got a garbage bag. <laughs> they own crabbing. I don't know what crabbing is. What does that means. mean? I don't know. I don't know. Could we fake I seen they ran out they ran out the door with a fucking Garbage trash bag. bag full of shit. I don't We're know. Long Island, dude. There's no crabbing around here, I don't think. I don't know. It's a creek around the corner. Yeah. Hey, they like legitimate, them. like pubic crab. <laughs> <laughs> that's in Queens. If, if, that's, if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> well, that, that's what's that's what's um, you know, that's exciting about starting a business is, is that you get those dreams of being like those Ram Jets or those, you know, whoever San Diego Customs, those 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 shops that that uh that that have figured out a couple paths to make it work, right? But. Man, it's it's tough when you're in the middle of the country and and that scene isn't big enough yeah, to where you just have to throw a your name on a t-shirt and you yeah, can't keep them on the yeah, shelf. You it, know? It's different, dude. Especially like like you said, where we're at, and I mean, Steve kind of can tell you like it's just Michigan's a little different. Like we're not caught up on all the stuff yet, and you know, like a lot of people, at least in our area, a lot of people are more like dealership like geared towards yeah, dealerships yeah. you know what i'm saying like they like that they like the big fancy big money places they like you know when you walk in and everyone's giving you coffee and and you know or like beer, yeah. yeah well not yeah not where we're at oh. but yeah, yeah they don't they don't really do that thing. it's, it's yeah, different where we're at our side of the state yeah either. but like i said man i i talked to tony at ramjet Mm -hmm. a lot and i see him you know as much as i can i i, I when i went to training uh for harley davidson out in phoenix i would always go out there i'd see you know danny at dixon and all that shit and like those are the shops that i look up to but then again man I, like tony's got to have more fucking stress than anybody I, you like, know and i have enough stress right now by myself yeah. i'm like i couldn't imagine being i him. love that dude the death yeah and, and um he, he handles has, it great, dude. He has a responsibility that I don't think anybody, any of us, even, you know, we probably both got 10 years on Tony. Um, yeah, he's and, like 30, dude. Fuck him. Dude, I think he's still in his 20s. <laughs> he's 20, like 9, dude. Fuck him. And, uh, I mean, he's got a great, great upbringing with his father and, and the, just the, the Phoenix community of yeah. motorcyclists. But that's a lot of responsibility, man, on that shop. And uh, I commend him. Dude, I, and, brag, I brag him up more than anybody because – like everyone you know a lot of people compare things to harley dealerships you yeah. know what i'm saying and i've been to a shit ton of harley dealerships you know over the last 15 years and tony blows out most dealerships in an independent yeah. shop parts just everything i'm like dude that kid is killing it you know mm -hmm. but i also i don't want to be there you know what i'm saying like <laughs> that, was, that was like a question i was just about to ask like how big's too big you that's, know at what for, point is for it? me personally like that like i said man that's not my gig like I, I i i respect them and like i said man i i i try to talk to them or hit them up as much as i possibly can and you know if i'm out that way i i see them but that dude i couldn't imagine i know what the stress i have and i went from like a stress-free career yeah. like i mean i Imagine like the stress you have, but then you had like six or seven employees. Some of them that's been there since the day his dad started the yeah. place, who may or may not have the same respect for him, you know, as the owner of the place. Is you know what I mean? Like it's a it's a really weird place that he's navigating that gets my utmost respect. And like I said, I I support that dude. And when you know I need to re up on some shirts, you know what I mean? Because like I said, it's like I'm in Texas. I don't really get to. You know, and I'm also I have I have counts myself yeah. and things, but I fucking love that shop. Phoenix, it's like a, uh, it's like when you go to New York, you got to see the fucking Empire yeah. State Building or the goddamn, uh, you know, Statue of Liberty. Yep. If you go to Phoenix and you're a biker, you got to go to Ramsey. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely fun out there, dude. Like those guys, 
definitely know how to party for sure. Yeah. And uh, they, like I said, man, it's just, it's, it's a whole, like his, he's on a whole nother level, man. Like it, it hands down a whole different What's level. even crazier though is like he can be on that level, but there's also a cruisy three miles down the yeah. road. There's whole different style, whole different kind of like, you know, atmosphere, whole, just a whole different thing. And he's still, and that, that dude's crushing it. Like it's. That new cruisy bike has me fucked up. I want to build an old road king, dude. He dude, he kills so it, dude. Sick. He and and I, I I like his style, but I we can't like his style and how he does the shop and what he does. Like it, it wouldn't work in Michigan. You know what it I'm saying? Will. It it like, could, maybe not but, his style, but what it, what what I like to look at it is. It's your version of the things you like. Yeah, yep. That when you start doing it, it only takes a little while before everybody else starts and going. Here's the Fuck, same. That's dope. And here's know? the same thing though. He's that. That's what I was just kind of saying. Like I look at those dudes and I'm like, damn, dude. I like how I need to be at that level, dude. He they've been around. Like I mean, Tony's been around for obviously Ram Jet's been yeah, around for a while. Cru- Cruz has been, been he's, he's, he's bounced around like Nassie and 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 some other he's shops. Been around, dude. He's been doing things and it's just. Yeah. What are you mixing with? I'm I'm whiskey. You do you do or whatever I'm, you want to do. Crown. You do whatever and, uh, you want to do. A little bit of that can like that ginger Canadian beer? ginger ale, whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's a. I mean, all these shops, man. Like you know, same thing with me, right? Like people look at my social media or my business. They're like, man, I want to get into painting. I'm like, dude, awesome. Number one, awesome. I'm glad you like it, but this is a long term game. Yeah. You're, yeah. Not, you're not gonna. You might be the one percent of the people that decide to paint to be like on my level like that, right? My level is fucking twenty years of work. Yeah. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. I'm just saying like legit. Like I'm twenty years in, and then I have friend. I have guys that that are twenty five and thirty years in that I'm like, I cannot. I just can't wait to be at their level. You know what I mean? My like one of my goals too. Like when I left the dealer, like I felt like even though I'm like good at like the whole f- a fast pace like flat rate thing. Yeah. Like one of my goals at the dealer when I left was to slow down. Yeah. Like, hey, dude, slow down. You know, try to do more stuff like this. Like going places. It didn't work out the greatest for a while, but yeah. like. That was kind of one of my goals. So, like, I feel like if if you kind of get beyond that, like, if you try to build up and do all this stuff, you're kind of, like, in, in my eyes, I, I'm kind of going against what I was trying to do, you know? Well, if you chase the idea of being bigger and bigger and bigger, you lose the, the, the passion for motorcycles yeah. because you, like we, we were saying earlier, you know, that, that Harley Davidson with the 100,000 work orders, imagine being the one man to absorb all those negative ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's going to take a toll on your connection to motorcycles, your love for it. There's there's guys out there, too, and there's there's bikes at the shop. Like I said, man, I should be at the shop. I should be, you know, working on stuff. I'm, I'm waiting on parts and, you know, whatever. But also, too, the, the bikes that are at my shop that have been there for a while because of COVID and because of parts being back ordered and all this stuff, like... When I leave after this weekend, like being in New York City, seeing the bikes, the East Coast bikes, seeing your stuff, seeing all these guys out here, like that just motivates me even more to where like when I go back, like I'm on a whole nother level. Like when I go back to being re-motivated in in bikes and, and seeing stuff, you know, so like this is the kind of stuff that almost helps guys yeah. like us out because yeah. we're all bike guys we're, we want to see this stuff you can get kind of wrapped up in like a, for lack of a better term insecurities yeah like when you're sitting at the shop grinding every day and you're seeing all this other shit take place on social media you're like you're like fuck man like I feel like I'm not doing much they're going noodling or what were they doing no crabbing I think they're going to uh, the, the nautical mile is what it's called around here it's a little it's it's a little sh- it's a little bar community up the road. Why'd they take a trash bag? <laughs> it's Scotty, dude. I'm telling you, listen, I, I I'm completely bummed out. Like Scotty is like he hates social media. Actually I think he loves it, but he, he he plays the part of where he like hates social media. He hates what like it did to the bike community. Cause that dude would like hop on his bike. And just go to like California and back. Yeah, that's just how he was. So like now with social media, I think he, you know, he he feels like there's a lot of people doing that, 
So he like hates this kind of shit. Yeah, but, but he's it's... the type of dude that like he's got the best stories. He's been around like you know he. I don't know. He should be it, here it, talking, it, not me. But. Yeah, it makes sense that like someone could hate that, but at the, at the same time, like you, you see all the the. I mean, we're all three of us are sitting at this table because of social media. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yep. There's no reason why any three of I, us would ever cross paths. I, other I, than I think there's more positive stuff than. Oh, yeah. I mean, there is negative stuff, but I feel I honestly I feel like there's more positive stuff that have popped up from social media than the negative stuff. Yeah, man, it's a. Uh, Cause like I ride a lot. I don't just do it to post on social media. You know, I don't give a fuck. If yeah. the, like Instagram went right away tomorrow, I'd still be like, "Fuck yeah, I kind of want to go to New York." Yeah, yeah. But it's like on we, TikTok, like doing it. Yeah. The dan- <laughs> Yo, I'm, <laughs> I'm, listen, man. I'm <laughs> so sick of that shit. I don't even have that stuff, but yeah. I'm sick of seeing that. But it was like back in '09. You know, fucking, I drove my V rod from fucking Michigan to Vegas. It all became because my dad's like, "Hey, I'm going to Vegas." You know, no parties in the house, and I just looked at him. I was like, "I'll meet you there." <laughs> you know, like there wasn't the social meet, or like yeah. there was Facebook and shit to put it on, but it wasn't like what it is now. It's not like I sat there. I was like, "I'm gonna look so cool on Facebook." I was like, "No, nah, well, I just want to ride my motorcycle." I can see, country. I can see how it would suck for a guy like that that was doing it. You know, for just, I mean, because here's the deal: like he probably he's probably right. I'm doing this because I love it, but I would be lying if I said none of it was not for the gram. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I it's mean, it's cool to show the world. Like, but when I say this, like, it, it's not like it all stemmed from just being able to show the the Instagram world or whatever we're riding. But when dudes are like, "Fuck, that's right, I want to do it," man, that that motivates you to do like, "Fuck right. yeah, man." You know, like I want to. What else can I? Who else can I motivate here? You so know what I mean. That was like when I met you. You know, you had that little event like Velodrome. Yeah, I just seen it went on, and then like, you know, I've heard of you before, but first time I met you, fucking just went and shot two hours across the state to just go to an event, and and dude, because it was all because of social media. And and the thing was is, I I've even said this. I'm like, I have more respect like for people like you that just. Hey man, there's something going on. I don't care how many miles or how many hours or you know what's going on. Like, let's just I'm gonna go out there. And we had we had a um, a little bike show in Detroit that a guy put on last weekend that was actually a really cool little killer, you know, kind of antique vintage motorcycle show in Detroit. Like some guys, like you know, want to hate on it, whatever. I'm like, listen, it's a bike show in our backyard. I don't give a shit what it is. It's right. in it's in our backyard. Let's go. Like, why wouldn't we go? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like if we should be on if the bike. Completely bunk. If, we'll fucking yeah. Dip out. If you know, this is a question I was talking with some people about. If all the magazines, hot bike, you know, everyone that that catered to our 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 world, if 15 years ago or 10 years ago they would have said, hey, hey guys. We're about to not exist anymore if we don't all get you guys to subscribe. Yeah, I think w- would you have would you have cared to have that or would you would you do you miss? I, it? I used to read magazines I used to have, like Clockwork, man. I, I, I used them. to have so in in Michigan the Horse magazine the that horse, was based yeah. out of Michigan. Yeah, so like I had a subscription to the Horse. I had a subscription to Hot Bike. I had a subscription to Cycle Source. Like that was. Like I still, I, I kind of miss the magazine thing, dude. Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to get at, great like, shits with magazines, dude. Great <laughs> like that's the whole point of it, right? Yeah. Like you put those right next to the toilet, man. You read them all day. And the fact that if you look at them, you don't feel as fucking shitty as if you're looking at your phone for when your phone right. reminds you you've been on the phone six hours today. <laughs> your, your battery can die on the phone. The magazine ain't going yeah. nowhere. It's, so it's what, I, what I'm getting at though is like, you know, if we could have saved magazines by simply just you know a couple bucks, right? I would have. Could you, you could also save the culture of your town by attending those small events. And maybe they might not be the events that you want to go to or, or like the ones that really fit your narrative. But it's it's kind of thing. It's like if, if me and five of my buddies are all into this Dyna performance, FXR, or whatever, and we mob to the local Hell Yeah Brother event, they'll probably look at us crazy. We'll probably look at them crazy, but somebody there's gonna be like, man, what kind of what kind of bike is that? Listen, right? A, I, I, you know, maybe when I was like eighteen, I wouldn't have said this, but like, uh, it's it's two wheels. A bike's a bike. Like, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go out and buy a, a gold wing or, or whatever. Indian, or, yeah. or, or an Indian, you know, whatever. <laughs> but if, if if they want, if we all go to one place and everyone's on bikes, I'm, yeah. I'm cool with that. Like I said, yeah. man, I don't give a shit who, who shows up or who's doing what. Like, Yeah, but the only, the only way to progress things is to support things there and, and start to reinforce the community. So it's like... It's like when they say, like, if you want to change things in your city, you got to go to, you know, the, what's this, the town hall meetings type thing, you know? That's the only place you're going to discuss and, and, and really grow things is to go to the place where people there, the people there are the people that you talk to to grow things. I, I mean, it sucks with some of these events. That it's like some people need the valid, 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 validation. Valid, validation that it's like the fuck, an epic Steve? epic event you know it's like sometimes these little like homegrown these smaller events like that's where you get the best connections like fucking camp outs you know having a velodrome type yeah. thing I, I it's love not a fucking Sturgis is awesome because of the riding yeah it's a good it's it's a decent ride out there for us it's not the greatest thing but it's a decent ride out there for us but the riding out there is awesome but other than that, like all the small events, like I, I've said this before, I'm like, I would rather take every weekend and go do a, a bullshit small event somewhere. I've met more friends from small events. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You because know? you can go to a small event and you can be a rock star at it by simply, I mean, that, that your, your small individual support on small events makes more of a dent, difference than like your number of the 460,000 people who yeah, exactly. Sturgis. Yeah. Not saying you shouldn't experience Sturgis for your own personal no, reasons, all, but... Yeah, they all have, like, their own, you know, part in the thing, which Sturgis is awesome yep. because, like, that's a, a reason I love going on Sturgis is I'm seeing all, people from all over the country. Yeah. It's a yeah. big it's a central location. Go, but it's, like, these smaller events, I'm meeting these people that I want to go see in Sturgis. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So Sturgis is, like, the uh, the home home. That's the event, fucking mecca, you know? Yeah. I mean, dude, the the riding out there is insane. Like, it's just, it's a, I mean, I, like I said, I, I would go every single year if I could. Yeah. You know, it's one of those places that I would literally try to go every single year if I could. Yeah, that, that's kind of the thing about with, with a lot of people is that, you know, you know, you can easily become, I mean, you see a lot of these, like, pages popping up over the over the country, like the club styles yeah. and the uh, performance Harley and the, and the Dyna Cruise and those things are kind of, I, I know, I think they're way more important than, than most people look at because those simple pages might be the connection to getting a type of demographic, a biker, to come to things that maybe the old school biker way, they, they're not going to, they're going to be intimidated by that. So, yeah, we, so like I have like, I have like so called chopper friends, and then I have like guys that are like, club guys and then i have like you know old school like bagger dudes whatever you want to call them you know like i, I kind of like just get along with everybody and kind of want to be a part of everything and like most that like that's the sad thing is i like i like going to like chopper stuff yeah me i too. like those dudes yeah. like oh dude, yeah i don't dress a, like them i don't like it's a new experience i've had hardtails and i have a i have two hardtails at the shop right now that like i've I fucking can't ride more than like you know 30 feet without killing my back on and shit they're badass bikes they're some of the yeah. most killer built bikes I've had I've, I've had at the shop but like we all like I want to go to those events I want to go to anything I possibly can that's bike related yeah but the problem is is a lot of people like everyone's got like these little niches and groups and you know I, I feel like social media help that you yeah, know help, help compartmentalize yeah everything. you know but like we got to be the people that we can separate those yeah, groups. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like, mean, here we are. We're performance bagger dudes. Technically, you are too. He's yeah. an FXR dude. I'm an FXR. On your performance bagger here. I'm on my road glide, but I'm, a, I'm an FXR guy. Yeah. All right. No, cool. I can't even say that because then I'm gonna be like that dipshit. Like I'm just talking about these guys that like want to be like, you know, segregated from everybody. Like I like bikes, dude. I you like, just don't want to be on, on a fucking I like, like motorcycle. You don't be recorded saying performance baggers and they're dope and you're not an FXR. Listen, I, I used to ride a fucking V route. I, I I rode a Sportster. I, I love you know. I, I love, dude. I love all the bikes. I, I I absolutely love the fact that people are buying baggers and pushing them to the limits and and doing all this stuff. My road glide isn't going to change much because this is exactly what it's meant to do. Yeah. Like I wanted to hop on, like I hopped on it i we did you know we're gonna do probably i don't know 
yeah, two thousand mile, two thousand mile weekend on it. Go home and it's all yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to get super crazy in that bike because it's just meant for me to, you know, yeah, throw some shit in the saddlebags like, yeah. and go. You know, like I respect everybody that's doing the stuff to the baggers because. For one, I dig it. I just can't afford it. Like I right. like it's big money to get See, into that. I stuff, can't man. afford it either. <laughs> it's just one thing. I sometimes I hate with like you know motorcycle community is the segregation on shit. Yeah, you know it's like all right, you ride this type of bike, we can't fuck with you. No fuck off. I don't care. Like I'll go rip you know hundred miles an hour down the highway next to some crazy ass chopper dude if he wants well, to. Like it all depends. Well, we used to joke too because the one thing I do like about how things are going now is things are getting better for people are doing better brakes, better motors, better mm. suspension. Like they're actually making bikes work better, work better, which is the mm. way it should be going that some of the aftermarket world, like it's getting out of control, but still like the, the whole swing of things, getting bikes to do better than what they're supposed to is a fucking is awesome. Yeah, win. Like, and the fact that you can take a bike like yours and rip 140 miles an hour all day long with shit in your saddlebags and go you know 800 miles you know wherever is fucking awesome you know what scares the fuck out of me i've never done it but like no front brake suicide shit i've done it i've been doing like foot clutch like i don't know how to fucking it's, work it's, this thing. it's like sketchy. what do you do with your foot when you it's, actually start leaning left and it's, you, it's sketchy dude you know and then you take your foot off and the clutch pops and you wheelie into the front car in front so of you. what's cool what's cool though and, and we don't see it because we don't pay attention to it but like there's a couple guys like reese yeah so reese reese builds some really cool bikes really fast bikes you know and he's got like the tough guy kind of chopper mm -hmm. setup which i fucking love but those dudes actually ride the bikes like mm -hmm. they have their little runs that they do and yes the it's, the, it's, it's and not three thousand miles but it's still probably you know some of those dudes come from you know illinois ohio fucking north, all carolina. Over, north carolina all over the place they're doing you know seven eight hundred miles on a fucking hardtail with a backpack strapped to a sissy bar Hell yeah. like yeah. You know, like I, I can, just, I can respect that, dude. Awesome. Yeah, Fuck dude. Yeah. They had how many? They had over a hundred bikes at, at their apocalypse run. It was sick, dude. Hell yeah. That's the kind of shit that makes it uh, fun again. You know, a hundred percent. You know, it's like, like it doesn't matter what bike you ride. Like I still want to like fuck with everybody. Yeah, I think that there's a there's a handful of bikes that that all kind of like intertwine together, and, and the and the choppers and vintage choppers really work well with the fxrs and dynas and the performance baggers yeah. we're all about the same thing riding them i, I kind of you know I, mean? I, I like the i, I like fxrs because it kind of is like the it's kind of everything like, bike. it's kind of it's kind of the everything bike it's kind of like a chopper you could have a slim down fxr but still throw like leather pros on or a sissy travel, bar bag yeah. travel and you still have suspension good brakes You're skinny you know? enough to, to exactly. fucking rip and like, like a trust chopper. me I'm, I'm gonna miss my bike tomorrow <laughs> yeah having the road glide but you know like dude brian's fxr so fucking underrated. Like you'll see a picture on Instagram, you're gonna look right over it. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing about it's twin. You, you you see it in person, and then you start knowing, noticing that it's it's a twin cam. It's got the new style controls, yeah. the master cylinders, like the the attention to detail that went into that bike. I didn't notice it until I seen it in person. I'm like, wow, this bike fucks. Yeah. So when I yeah, when no. I put that bike together, I was obviously still at the dealership. This was years ago. And like, I had a bunch of takeoff parts. Yeah. So like at first I was like, fuck, I'm gonna build like a super cheap bike, like just takeoff parts. Then I started doing it and I was like, damn, I'm gonna do like a super clean, like kind of understated, if Harley were to build like a twin cam FXR, because yeah. it's got, you know, like modern, like the new late model touring controls yeah. and hydraulic clutch and six speed and all this stuff. I'm like Brembo brakes, like all stock takeoff stuff. I'm like, ah, if Harley built like an FXR, maybe this is what it would be, like the modern yeah. version of it. And then kind of like what, uh, not to say that it's also what, but like when Joe did the, uh, what was it? FXR4. FXR5. Five. 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 Yeah. When Joe Kid did that. Yeah, I mean, I, dude, I'm, ah, that bitch better. <laughs> like, that, hold on, that, that birch white one. Listen, I don't know, man. Like, Joe talking shit on Joe. Joe, Joe, Joe was Joe was talking some shit. Like when we were at Sturgis, and he had his FXR5, and I had my 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 bike, and uh, 
we were we had him side by side and he was actually like damn dude he's like that thing's clean as fuck like yeah he's like how much would you you know ask for that bike and i told him an amount and he's like shit he's like i need to ask a little less for my bike then. <laughs> <laughs> dude like his bike like i'm telling you like it's so underrated i have in a picture but you see it in person the attention to detail i so fucking i have sick. awesome people that i like live around and like kind of work with so fab kevin dude's been in the industry yeah, forever yeah. so I like i don't know him but i know of him very the, big fan the f- nicest fucking guy in the industry that you could ever come across the guy is a genius when it comes to motorcycles he can look at a you know a, a rear master cylinder setup like a custom mid control and say yeah that, that brake's not going to work the leverage all that. like he can just look at shit and and just kind of like mm-hmm. see that so I, I met him a, a, actually when I was at MMI in Florida at Bike Week and uh, found out that we... I didn't know he was up there, man. If he was, I would have probably reached out. So he... So, well, this was... I met... This was yeah, years yeah. ago. No, I, I didn't know he was up towards your area. Dude, area. we live in the same neighborhood, like literally cool. like streets away from one another. And I, I didn't know this. come back to Detroit. Yeah, I didn't, I, know this at the, I didn't know this at the time when I met him, but like... I, I ran across him in Bike Week, and I, I saw one of his bikes that he built. He built this badass orange hardtail shovel head. It's called Industrial Disease. He had all of his parts on it, and I, I saw it from like 100 feet away. So I kind of beelined it over there, started looking at the bike. He pops up. He pops up, and he's like, "Oh, you know." We start talking. He's like, hey, "Where are you from?" I'm like, oh, "I'm from a you know spot in Michigan." He's like, "Oh yeah, me too." I'm like, where are you from? He's like, ah, oh, you wouldn't know. It's a little small town, Harrison Township. I'm like, I'm from Harrison Township. We literally <laughs> yeah. fucking live like. Did we just become best friends? Yeah, dude. That's how it was, you know. Like small world. Holy so he fuck. did. So when I when I moved back and and started doing stuff, he helped me out on like I had a CB 750 chopper that he helped me out on a couple other things. And then when I did my FXR, I built a whole bike as an Evo, and then fucking tore it down because I wanted to do a twin cam. He helped me. We cut the frame. Did like true mids. Like he, my my mid control setup is his first, like actual bagger mid control setup that mm-hmm. he did. So we did that all on my bike. Like he helped me out with everything. Like the dude. Like I have some of the best people around me that fucking yeah. you know in the industry. So it, it works out like really good in in my favor. It's crazy how that shit works though. Like you just decided to go to an event. And then you talk to this one motherfucker, and then next thing you know, yep. he's in your backyard, right there. And, and this and, was, you know, that's a connection that wouldn't have been made without fucking. And this was back lead. in the day, like literally, like where he was at in Daytona, like the lot he was in at. It was like him, like a couple other, you know, small little shops, and like literally, like Indian Larry was like kind of small at that time. Not small, but like not as big. He had like a small little setup. Jesse James had like. At that time, which was big, but it was small for like him. Like this was yeah. way back in the day, so it was just cool to like see those dudes and kind of be a part of that. Like back before TV, like really. Well, hit. you know, another part about like being in this bike world is like so so. You know, at least my early days in the in the two thousands in the aughts, I think it's what it's called. <laughs> um, everybody wanted their name on every part of the project and and what really happens is it is like a fab kevin that also helps the clem speed shop it is a texas performance that helps the fast life garage it's it's like the these specialist people yeah. yeah you know these specialists that all come together to build like a, a great project and um you know i i probably i probably have over 30 cover magazine bikes that i painted and only like four that are that have my name on it. Yeah, you it know sucks, I mean? dude. It it sucks. And and like Kev, Kev was like a big, you know, like he he's got a shit ton of followers on it, or at least in my opinion, got a shit ton of followers on Instagram and shit like that. But like he doesn't get like the recognition from the newer dudes. He gets a lot from the old school guys, but not from like the newer. That's dudes. That's what's weird because like I feel like we don't get any love. Like I say, we like I mean like me, Steve. Like our generation of bikers, we get zero fucking attention from every fucking. If if that's, I mean, think about it. Steve's got a YouTube channel; it's fucking killing it. I got this podcast; we're doing well. We we had to make our own fucking channels of media just to get fucking recognition because we don't get no love from anybody else. It's you yeah, know, I don't know, dude. It's it's really weird. Like I said, man. Like I see certain things on social media that like 
blows my mind the the amount of attention and and this and that and all this shit that goes out and it's like man like there's people out there that no one even fucking knows about even with social media that should be you want to hear a good drunk rant from me right now because I've had two uh, <laughs> two uh, too many of these whiskeys I'm not going to say his name <laughs> I'm going to yeah. cut this shit out yeah <laughs> should we just stop right now <laughs> it's crazy to be like in this industry as long as I've been maybe you know like, and I'm not I'm not asking for anything crazy as far as like a notoriety but in the podcast world, we're we're kind of an early adopter to the podcast. Uh, our 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 numbers are pretty high for the motorcycle podcast world. Yeah. Um, my paint work and my involvement in the in the motorcycle world, you know, is I'm I'm trying to build my resume right now. Doo -doo, beep, beep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second time tonight, <laughs> but like when it comes to like, there's other people that have podcasts that just that, that are bigger names than we are but don't act like we exist it's weird it's weird when you're like it's just it's just weird like you know like my my whole job with this podcast is to find uh steves and and clems and everybody or or not find them but just go expose them yeah to whatever yeah. i've got built right Cause and i and i we don't always have like the reach, you know. So yeah. It's like you're building this reach, and then you're you're coming out with these people, and you're putting them out there. You're like, dude, this person fucks. This yeah. Person. And so that's my that's what I'm doing. So it's like, okay, if I'm not the top, uh, fucking you know, steak cutter in this motherfucker, I'm not the 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 per. I'm not. It's, almost said it. I'm not those guys yeah. that, that that like run this shit. So why are those guys not reach? Why is there not a why is there not features on these guys that I think are like you or or you or or these other people? Why are these companies on the man? I, I don't want to talk shit, but I am. It, I um, just, I it just sucks it, to me that they're not they're they're so narrow minded into what's going on grassroots, right? Your grassroots, well, I'm grassroots. Your grassroots. It, I think, I, dude, it's I I see it like in the even in like the the parts industry too, like. People have like they have like a, a group of people that they yeah. are with. It's like you get it's kind of like an Illuminati type, and shit. that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it is. I, I mean, unfortunately, like people and it, and it's I guess it's in, a, in at one side it's like kind of good because they are supportive of their little crew, but that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a bunch of like little groups out there that people fuck with them they don't fuck with nobody else if you're not a part of yeah, that little to me if you're a media company your job is to uh mirror and i've heard this from one of the guys i'm talking about your job is to mirror what is taking place in the in in the world that you're trying to cover right because that's like in the motorcycle industry you know going back to fucking indian larry and all that shit like the the biker build-offs and all that shit like the media was sitting out there and they were fucking capturing this greatness happening between Indy and Larry and fucking Jesse James yeah. and fucking Billy Lane. It seemed like media was people. looking for people to, to expose as opposed to now. It's now like it's people like are looking see. for media to expose them. Yeah, you know, it's like, but who's who's the media? Is it now our time to fucking make this shit happen ourselves or are we going to well, wait Well, people are doing else? it because... People are doing it, and they're they can do it because of social media. It's it's yeah. technically it's free to everybody. So like anybody can do this shit, or anybody can like try to like you know drum up. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, it's just it's easier, I guess now. Like I don't know, it just kind of sucks. It's like, easier, so it made it fucking harder. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like we're all it fucking, raised the bar. Yeah, yeah. We are all sitting out here, and like you know, being a Hollywood star back in the day. Like, sometimes it just took the balls to fucking fly and, like, go out there and, you know, make some shit happen and make yourself seen a little bit. Next thing you know, they're like, all right, this person's decent at what they do. Let's expose them. I you just know? I just and, feel like if your job is to go around and expose, like, the industry, and the industry is the YouTube people, the, the grassroots shops, the, the brick and mortars, uh, the other people doing media, the the painters, the, the, the fabricators, the uh, the the machinists, the all these all these millions of fucking bricks that go into an arch, man. Yeah, but nobody nobody's trying to build up 
the small people anymore. They're they're just trying to get they're the big. For the, they're, they're getting the big people that are gonna help both of them out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so I'm trying to get the small people. I'm trying to build them up and get the big people to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, man. Like it's what it, it's. If it's, if the big companies knew how much you know we influenced all these other people out there between the shit you do, you know, being a small man shop, you're not the Harley dealer, you know, and saying, Ooh. Hey, order out of our catalog. And I'm not, you know, I'm doing the YouTube shit and I'm putting other stuff on the, mm -hmm. the palette. And then you're bringing, you know, other people, you know, that you've never heard of. And people are like, who the, is this guy? And they're hearing these conversations. Like if they brought all this shit like out and they started understanding like what we're trying to do, fuck, they could capitalize on all of us. Yeah, so like, yeah, but they just want they want somebody to they want somebody already big to just pay you to do what you got to do or you know what I'm saying? They're, like they're scared of guys of us that are just gonna be out here and just say fuck. You well, know? yeah, you know, like yeah. We, Steve's like, trying to say it because he can't say it on his. Well, channel. We're, <laughs> like, uh, dude, it's like uh, <laughs> it's like we're stuck in a, such a fucking corporate world that yeah. it's like now the people that are like you know we're going on this outside shit yeah. and like you go out and you say fuck a little bit like people are like I'll fuck with him alright well like pussy <laughs> pussy <laughs> what else you gotta throw that in there <laughs> get I'm it getting, all out now I'm getting drunk so. <laughs> balls yeah, he, he got a nickname from uh, oh the, actually was, Lisa Baker uh, gave him the name balls dude no, they call me the, fucking balls worth by the way by the way Bert is fucking awesome dude. yes Bert is awesome. Bert is legendary. So I, I've known him through Kev. I wish that he would have married me, like dude. my wife. That would have been the fucking shit, dude. I've, I've known him for a while, and and through like Kevin and all the old, yeah. the older dudes like in the industry. So he Bert's a Bert drag races every yeah. fucking weekend that he can. We we got a local track back home. Like it's about about forty five minutes from us, but we'll so Myland. Okay. We'll we'll still go out there. It's about forty five minutes. We'll go out there as much as we can. Yeah. So we see him out there all the time, and this motherfucker is so. He's he's so jacked up. He's he's fucking you know got his bikes out there, his truck, his trailer, the whole deal. He's got guys with him. He's he's doing all this and he's trying to run this bike. He's got some pretty fast bikes, and every time I see him, this dude cannot remember who I am at all. He he. <laughs> Every single time he call, he sees me, I'm Travis Barker. That's it. That's that's who that's who I am to him. I'm like, yeah. dude, really? I'm like, for the last five years, that's like that. That's what I am to you as Travis Barker. Yeah. He, he he. That's that's what he does, and I just roll with it. Now I'm like, all right. I'm yeah, like, just yeah. Be him. Yep. That's it. Dude. Yeah. His wife ended up. Uh, I, I called. You know, we started the podcast talking about like uh, I was trying to give them an uh, introduction to Steve and like what he is to our like our world or our yeah. industry or whatever yep. i said steve just has big balls and he fucking rides hard as yep. fuck and he he lives on his balls basically there's <laughs> and uh she she uh lisa was like she has a very i just person. she's like all i can think about is steve's balls right now <laughs> so dude there there's like there there's a couple people if like if i could sponsor somebody which i can't just so you guys yeah. know i'm, I'm not even, don't reach out don't, yeah, don't, don't reach out i'm not giving you nothing I, I can't afford it all right but if there was somebody that i could sponsor it would be steve mm -hmm. and you'll see him you'll you'll see him tomorrow but so my boy Paulie, he's got these kids, dude. They're from Connecticut, the East Coast and kids. Paulie is the greatest dude on the planet. I look up to him as like a father, a guy, the whole deal. He, this yeah. dude is unbelievable. He is the the best father figure I've seen ever. The, these kids are fucking amazing. His kid is a kid that's ripping wheelie like 12 o'clock he's scraping he's gr dragging so hands he, he's like sporty. fathering and uh, mentoring all those dudes dude the, oh he, yeah how old's the kid 16 okay this kid is oh so, paulie drags yeah oh fucking dude uncle yeah. paulie that's his dad well so. I, I i instagram i think it's so, like so if paulie i was gonna, if i could sponsor somebody it would be him because he smashes miles and i would sponsor fucking paulie the the, the kid because 
they're he's fucking insane. This kid's yeah. 16 years old tearing this sporty up like no tomorrow. Nice. And he, he he runs with you know Mikey and Gabe and all these kids out there. They're, those dudes are insane. They they are the baddest dudes on two wheels. Out hands so down. They were at like East Coast and and I, I kind of like picked up on this and it's like younger dude he's rolling around on a sporty yeah, right yeah and then he's like rips on someone else's dx ripping wheelies yeah. and then I, I clicked on his instagram you go back to his first photo and he's like 13 yeah at east coast and i think in like a picture with exposed yeah just like you know and like you've seen the hot or the lights in this little kid's eyes they'll, he's like i want to be this guy they'll be there Charlie. if you're listening <laughs> there is your young demographic right yes. there yeah. buddy yeah and a guy like that because it's like I don't but, know what three four years ago and he's just sitting there with like i want to be like these guys and then three years later he's riding with these guys and these guys are like and this kid he's young as hell and they're like yeah he's badass so we we come out here so i i i try to come to new york as much as i can like a few years ago we'd come like three four times a year we'd come out obviously for like the block party we'd come out for like the aiden ride and then our little crew of guys that we got yeah. out here We'll go out like normally, probably like October. We'll come back out here. We'll go to New Haven, Connecticut, and we do this like go kart racing thing. So we get all these these dudes at East Coast, and they ride out. They dude, they like mob the highway. We go to this go kart track in New Haven. They have this insane go kart track. These things are fucking fast as shit, and these dudes hop in there, and they're competitive as hell, dude. So we're like, people are like, you know whiplash no broken bumping. ribs and Why? shit you know like insane <laughs> yeah. and uncle paul he's like the 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 he's like the the godfather of all these dudes like he's like the guy that's like you know make sure they're stay in their place and shit then we go get pizza new haven connecticut apparently has like the the greatest pizza i'm fucking over everybody tell me where the best pizza is they frank, can all fuck frank off peppy's from. is like apparently you the, know what fucks cc's <laughs> Fuck out of here. Jets that's pizza. Like, that's like him telling me, like, hey, best breakfast is fucking Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. Like, I got a great story for you, and it's all with love. I'm, I'm saying my 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 <laughs> struggles with Dude, love. Spumoni's fucked today. Yeah. That was great. So what was it called we ate? Spumoni's. L.O.B. So, Spumoni's. Before we even got to New York, fucking uh, the homie Chris uh, Gallup, is how you say it? Gallup Life? Yeah. Yeah. From uh, Texas, he's Probably from New though. Jersey. He hits me up and goes, "You gotta try this spot." And so we were rolling around like Manhattan. We're like, you know what? Let's just fucking like drop a pin at that pizza spot. That's a destination because we had no destination at that point. You guys were still ripping up yeah. the, up uh, Long Island. Yep. So we get there. I order the pizza, and then I text him. And go or no? I, I text him when I get there. I'm like, hey, we're at the spot. Hell yeah, thank you. Dope. You know, it seemed like a good little setting outdoor. We were able to pee. Which was I was worried about that. Yeah. I didn't know how the fucking bathroom situation was in in New York. Right. <laughs> so, soon as after I ordered my, he goes, "Oh, by the way, get the uh, get, get the, the Sicilian, square. the Sicilian, uh, okay. which is like the, the fucking square, square pizza." pizza. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I just fucking ordered a large goddamn fucking just pie. Where are yeah. you going? And then, and then I was I text somebody, sent them a picture where I'm at. They're like, "Did you get the square? You got to get the square." I'm like, "Mother." that and then a third person chimes in like I hope you got the square I'm like who the fuck what? why didn't you lead off with the square <laughs> be like go here get the square so dude when we go to New Haven they have like there's like two pizza joints down there like side by side and like apparently like if you look it up they're supposed to be like the best pizza places in like the United States I don't trust anybody out here I pizza. dude I know it's because it, everyone's got it was, it, the everybody's pizza we the have was good bagels, yeah. everybody's they do the best it's, it's legit dude it's, it's a crazy place and like there's a line wrapped around like down the block of this place every day to get this pizza we show up with like 30 dudes from these you know east coasting kids and Uncle Polly just fucking rolls us right in. They fucking put out like three fucking huge tables for us. They take care of us. The pizza's good, dude. But like, I don't know. Like, I, it it's Dad. pizza. Yeah, Papa don't. John's. Yeah, yeah Papa, we got Papa John's. Yeah, Papa John's fucks, bro. Dude, <laughs> get the little the garlic dipping sauce, bro. <laughs> 
Yeah, you gotta like peel open with yeah. like expiration date can, on it. I can already yeah. feel everybody's just like hatred towards you. Oh, that's fine. Like, everybody like, you can hey, yo, don't say that shit like, tomorrow, don't bro. Fuck everybody, with their, their pizza, bro. Everybody and their fucking food recommendations <laughs> can fuck all the way off, dude. I'm, I'm not gonna say that the Sicilian pizza pizza wasn't the best in the world. You didn't tell me to buy it originally, so I got the fucking regular pie, dude. So dude, like, I, I don't even think you're supposed good. to get squares here. I thought uh, round pies are like the New York thing, dude. Well, I don't. Apparently, at fucking LBs, Bamonis, you gotta get the square. See, we need a Danny. We need a fucking NYC Danny D to be here. To Why like is kinda... it fucking margarita? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's what sucks, man. Well, he won't come out here though. It's we're in Long Island. He's in Queens. Yeah, so yeah. He, 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 they don't fuck around with that. Like they don't. Ride. They don't. They don't jump cities around yeah, here. Yeah, they hate apparently. each other. You know, if you live in dude, did you, you grow up with fucking gangster rap or what? You know how it fucking rolls down here. Queens Bridge, bro. Like, that's Nas territory. All I, all we, I just, we, we just went seven hundred miles to get here. They won't go ten miles to see each other, dude. Oh, fucking uh, race glide today. You see it in our group chat, <laughs> or not even the group chat. The fucking uh, I think he comments. Y'all going to Boston? Like I just rode two thousand miles <laughs> to fucking New York. You bring your ass down here one hundred and fifty miles. <laughs> yeah, make shit happen. I'm trying to, but man. we're gonna be gone by the time you fucking listen to us. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, long gone. Hey, but honestly, though, like, uh, this year, I feel like, even though I keep saying it, but COVID, fucking all this bullshit, there's a lot of dudes, like, not in the chopper scene kind of coming here, like, to hang out, because it is a good party. Like, you know, mm-hmm. people get to kind of see the shit, like... I'm excited to go back tomorrow. Like, I went last year, yeah. and everything fucking shit was amazing last year. Good-ass time. Yeah. You know, whatever. I'm kind of pissed that I bet you that barbecue joint's closed if they're Mabel's. Not. Fuck. That place is right around the block, dude. That's, dude, yeah, that's Mabel's a jam. probably awesome. Fucks. It is, dude. They I would might, love to eat New York barbecue, because I don't give a fuck about Texas barbecue. They might be. They I might don't, be even, I don't even know if it was that good, but I think I was just, by the time I got the food, I was that drunk. Yeah, it's pretty good, dude. They, they might be open. They I think they're doing, like, shit, like, out in the street or whatever. That's but, perfect. But, yeah, dude, uh, Bobby Seeger, you know, he fucking yeah. puts on a awesome party dude he's the dude like super cool man yeah so uh, uh bare knuckle paul uh texted me this morning he was like hey man you're in fucking uh you know because we were me and uh steve were kind of playing it close to the chest on this uh coming down here yeah we were like half-assed playing like the whole like guess where we're going like it's fucking no it started out it was 10 16 in the morning so you, you guys finally, are doing it for, you guys are the, doing it for the gram dude you guys for are sure like, yeah, yeah look at no, us 10, we're gonna just in the morning like we're talking he's about an influencer night, bro <laughs> we're talking about it the night before and then finally like got confirmation to go and that shit and then it was like 10 16 he texts me whatever and we're in the same fucking house, but whatever. I was thinking shit. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, you should have been like, looking at we're going to New York. Instead of the I was home. asking my wife permission to go to New York. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the fucking, like, I was like, at that point, I packed a bag. We were on the road by 1045. Yeah. 30 minute fucking decision to do a 700 plus mile one yeah. way trip. Yeah. I try to do that and it doesn't work out. I don't know like, if H- a kid or a wife. So H- H- HPI, like, I was like, yo, I'm going. Like, Jimmy hit me up. He's like, yo, you're going to make it? I'm like, yeah, actually, I am. I'm like, I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit Steve up right now. <laughs> Steve, you going? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving, you know, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. Let me see what's up. Then, like, dude, like, day of, I'm like, yeah, it ain't gonna happen. Like, fuck me, dude. Like, I was this, so hungover when I went to. Oh yeah, we were. At, but <laughs> I think dude, I, we went out. It was Thursday night. We went yeah. out Thursday night too. I I'm got like, drunk by myself. <laughs> I don't do that often. That's awesome. I love those times. I was trying Sorry. to make it. I was Sorry, like, all right, if I can get the shop like kind of like situated by like 11, 12 o'clock, I'm like, I'll be good as long as I leave by noon. I hit him up. He's like, bro. He's like, I'm not even on the road yet. I'm like. Oh, fucking one o'clock, dude. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and he's got, well, he it's quicker for you to get to HBI than me, but. Yeah. It's like four or something. 270 miles. That, that's what sucks about but this trip. 270 miles for a fucking bike, or a bike night. Just yeah. because. I was trying to uh, make HBI happen, but it was kind of like in the center of this big loop. And, 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 and uh, you know, we were trying to do HPI, and I want to, dude, me and him have so much to talk about since the last podcast we had. You better um, stop there on the way home. I can't, dude. I'm fucking dry. I'm going south from here and hitting through no, Tennessee. No, you're going to fucking Indy. Uh, absolutely not. I'm <laughs> going fucking home, man. Sorry, Jimmy. I got 
so dude it, it was like uh i guess they didn't have any luck it's gonna be loud on the it's podcast it's gonna get loud so you might want to wrap this one up airbnb is gonna be really not out? like us 238 okay or oh. we can just keep it going maybe, <laughs> we, maybe we can get fucking this uh, in new york fuck it scotty on here who cares Maybe maybe we can uh, cut it off at three thirty with a Patreon edition. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, the whole deal with the, the this trip, man, it was kind of like a it literally uh, September first. I had no plans. Any of this was taking place. Like, drunk. <laughs> any of this was going to take place, and then things fell into place. It happened, um, and then the time it happened. Because the, the motors, like, there's not a lot of 131 crate motors anywhere in America yeah. right now. So, because Harley can't, they don't have the yeah, components dude, to they're, make anything. They're like, uh, maybe not now, but, like, in this summer or this past season, they were, like, 15 to 20 days out just on regular parts. Yeah, exactly. So, he hit me up and he said he found, like, he ordered one from the dealer, like, actual Harley itself. And um, they, you know... Crazy enough, they're in Milwaukee, this dealership, yeah. but yet they can't, can't just go drive down the street and, and throw it in the back of the truck and bring it back, right? So it was like um, they didn't know what was going to happen with it. And so last minute, like, I need, I was like, dude, if I'm going to come up there, I need to know now because it's fucking Tuesday and I need to leave Saturday or, or, or Friday morning. And he goes, all right, I'll call you back later. And then he just sends me a picture of the motor. It just showed up out of nowhere. They had no idea it was going to show up. So it ended up happening. And then this part of the trip, obviously, is the same shit. You know what I mean? We just kind of, like, went with it. But with it being so close to this block party and, and like, you being here, like, not being in, in Detroit, which yeah. would have been fun. But I, I would have felt bad going to Detroit and not finally. Dude, he hit me up. He's like. He's like, yo. We're trying to time this shit out. I know. He's like, he's he's gonna be in. He's like, when, when are you leaving for New York? I'm like, ah, Wednesday night. He's like, oh. I'm like, why? What's up? He's like, uh, Jace will be here like Wednesday, like afternoon. Yeah. Well, I said Jace will be here Wednesday, and then you're like, I'll drive to you, and then I was like, his boat rolls in at four, and you're like, well, that doesn't work. We gotta leave, <laughs> we gotta leave Detroit by like, like six. six, and I'm like, all right, whatever. And then he, that, Jace texts me like, "You want to go to New York?" And I'm like, "We do a podcast." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the kind of thing. It's like it, it's like a lot of the shit does become. I mean, you've seen it. Like we were hanging out all night tonight, and you see how it is when it's like we're on vacation, all of us. Oh yeah. And you're trying to like wrangle it up to just yeah. do this. Yep. It's, it's a very very difficult to do this when you're having just as much fun all sitting on the couch drinking yeah. beer and talking yep. shit. You know. Yeah. And you got to get serious, and like the half of the house has to be quiet, and, <laughs> which they're <and>, not. <laughs> but that's what's. I don't know. It's a good time, but yeah. I don't know. So what? What do you think you're gonna how, like? Crazy year, we all agree. But how do you feel about like? I mean, you're managing, right? Like everything's coming through. Yeah. Are yeah. you up from last year? Down from last uh, year? I'm. I'm. I'm down on. I'm down on part sales because of. Uh, well, a lot of it, I, I'm strictly like 90% of my sales is through drag. So like a lot of the stuff was on back order. A lot of the stuff was, um, you know, shipping was crazy for a while. So like I had like two or three months of, you know, down months, but I'm back up. Like after that, I've been back up, but I'm still, I'm still down a little bit, the, you know, yeah. this year. Because I had that with like rocks, you know, my buddy Charlie yeah. Rock. It was like, you made an order. But the motherfucker wouldn't ship for like five days. I had I, I posted a couple times where like it's I like literally in stock five days to ship. Yeah, just processing yeah. time. So yeah. like I posted a couple times of just like every time I, I I log on to like drag, you know, I got this like warning thing across the top, and it was like twelve fucking warning things across there. I posted a picture of it. I'm like, yo, everyone that's like bitching about where their parts are at, here's where their your yeah, parts and are at. Yeah, right. Everybody's fucking dude. I had more lives. people. I, you know, the good thing that here's a good thing for social media a lot of my customers aren't on social media, but a lot of the people that like we talk to other shops, they all are on social media. I had more comments of other shops being like, Yo, I'm you know, two hours away from the warehouse in North Carolina and it's taking me two weeks to get parts or, or whatever. So it's like, all right, I'm not the only motherfucker in this boat. Like everybody's yeah. dealing with it. And you know, like 
once people started seeing that and started realizing like yo like it's not just me it's everybody Everyone. yeah they kind of like you know like Chill i said out. man i i got some pretty good customers everyone's been pretty cool um i'm still waiting on parts for a couple bikes you know but like yeah and, and you know what when, when we talk about the negative customers on this podcast it's more to let people see what it feels like on the other end yeah so maybe a listener might be that negative guy maybe he might be the dude that's uh that uh is more demanding than he is helpful you know what i mean and 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 it's not to make them feel like shit i mean but i mean if you're a shitty dude then feel like that but i mean it's more to just like look man we're all humans here trying to make like a living doing this shit Things like, you know, like I said, man, I'm down on some part sales, but like overall, I'm probably doing better than, you know, better than I should be, which is good. Yeah. Um, You know, it's just, like I said, man, this year has been kind of fucked up for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm like, I'm looking forward to, I'm I'm looking forward to wintertime, man. Like just kind of like getting back to, dude. I've only been like I've I've only been open for two and a half years. So yeah, like then you I'm still the I'm of- still getting into like the the swing of things, and then COVID hit. You know, yep. so it's like I had to relearn everything. You know, so. <laughs> 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 I thought it was gonna be silent. <laughs> Homeboy just shit himself over here. I was gonna say, what the fuck did I miss? Dude, this whiskey, dude. <laughs> you blame it on Crown, the whiskey. Crown is whiskey, right? No, you right? literally blew up a shitter in New Jersey on the way here. And a dude walked went to walk in it afterwards. He's like, I don't know, bro. I don't know if that's a good idea. Yo, so. The dude went in the fucking weapon shit. <laughs> dude, so between, between his shit and we, we got our cards declined in Jersey because of the yeah. way they do the gas pumps. Like, no one should go to Jersey. Just skip over Jersey. Dude, dude. did y'all have to deal with, like, a... Because he told me that it... I was like, like we're sitting at the light before the gas station. I was like, Jersey's kind of weird. Like, they have fucking... They're, they're supposed like to you pump, can't your, pump your own they're gas. They're supposed to. So then Bikes, goes, they normally let you do it yourself. Well, he's like, well, how does this work? And this guy, like, I don't know if he was answering him. I just swiped my card and it worked. Yeah, I was asking him, I was like, how does this work? I'm from Texas. And he goes, you put your card in, you just... A credit or debit. And I'm like... No shit, motherfucker! Like just, it like, asks I'm you not for an amount. Break any rules? Or... It asks you for an amount, and you have to hit like cancel because you on a bike you don't know how much you're putting in. What are they singing over there or what, dude? Is that picking up hard? It's it's picking up annoyingly, but I, I get as long as as long as the listeners, in, man? as long as the listeners <laughs> understand. If they made it this far already, it's a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, you're gonna have the worst numbers on this podcast. You're gonna be like, Clem's who? Fuck well, them, no. motherfuckers. Steve's on it, so we're gonna. Oh, we're gonna oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Y'all know the size of my head already. Don't make it any bigger. Yeah. He's an influencer, bro. You, uh, get a, you get a repost from Steve. You do, boot, you do like booty pics and shit. Like, yeah. is that kind of influencing? You've you seen this. Hank His <laughs> YouTube is all about eyebrows, dude. He fucking kills it on the YouTube game. Nah, that's a uh, yeah, yeah. New York. I mean, uh, New Jersey was crazy with that. Like, it was dude, there was a dude walking around with a fucking like shell shirt on, yeah. like pumping people's gas. I'm like, dude, can I touch my gas tank? And how's this work? We you know? normally try not to stop there. We had to in like the one Yeah, place. I was about to like point him over and be like, let's stop PA. Yeah. But then I was like, ah, whatever. I'm we were kind of stuck where we were at. So we're like, fuck it. I know there's one. I, dude, I've done this trip like so dude, many this times. this is civilized we, fucking America. Why can't we pump our own gas? I know, dude. Hey, well, you know. We stop at the same fucking stops every year too. <laughs> It's like, yo, like you're on the road, like you kind of want to see something new. It's like, hey, we've been here 17 times. Like, No, cool. I do the same thing when I go west because those those become the spots that are perfect for a bike trip. So I have a couple that are perfect for the bike trip yeah. stops and a couple that are perfect for the cars. I mean, we, we pretty much do like the same mileage in between gas stops. So it's like you're pretty much going to be in the same area every single time. But yeah. one thing that's weird with Jace, so like I've ridden with Jace, you know, we've hit three time zones so far. You know, we've done... Uh, Eastern, Central, and then Mountain Mountain. Time. But it's like, when we're more towards the Mountain Time, it's like, you hop on the bike, and he's like, he's like, I got the next gas stop, well, 120, 130 miles work, and I'm like, yeah. And then we're leaving Michigan, he's like, you got the next gas stop? I'm like, dude, there's like gas stations every 20 miles. I know. You know, if it's like over 40 miles, I'll be surprised. You know, like, 
it's like well, you never there was your... that time on the fucking turnpike where we we hit the we hit that one spot yeah. and I was, I was pointing I was like do you, I was trying to like use some kind of unagreed upon hand signal yeah. that was like pull over or keep going right because we were at I wasn't paying attention I was like we left we if left he gets uh, off this accident I'll get off but if he keeps going I'm still good we said we were gonna we left Lansing right yeah we gassed yeah, up yeah. like maybe ten miles outside of there yeah right before the highway. And then we hit that. We went down uh, and and hit like Toledo. Jumped on the turnpike. Was down the turnpike and right, probably like thirty miles before Cleveland area. Yeah, Ohio's got the nice like service plazas or whatever. Yeah, the but service plazas. But they're spread out. We were out, trying though. not to uh, get no, off no, the no, highway yeah, at yeah. the pay. Yeah. You know, there's there's nothing nice about Ohio. Ohio yeah. is the taint hey. of America. Yeah, we all know that. But the service plazas aren't horrible. Yeah, we, okay, had a, we had a Panera bread there. We yeah, had see? fucking nice. We had a little bacon. We just gas cop, up. The cops are assholes. Yeah. yeah. They yep. still have a warrant in fucking Ohio. Dude, tell me you're an influencer. <laughs> yeah, be Dude, like, they, yo, I got you wanna, followers you on see Instagram. Their, the Ohio ticket, fucking, it's on the YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we passed the gas stop. Or, or no, like, uh, we were both coming up on, we were probably both like, I think I was 53 miles and you were like 45. Yeah. And it said next gas stop 41 miles. I didn't know what he had on his bike, but I, I knew I had 53. I didn't know what he had until we actually stopped. I was like, or this. I was like, go or this. And then I think I did a thumbs up. Like, you look like Danny D right now. He's got the Probably. craziest fucking like, you know, if he needs to eat, he's doing one of these and all this shit. Like he's got the craziest hand signals. Yes. Yeah. I got like, Gas, <laughs> or I got like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> this is any, hey. anything, anything beyond that. I'll just like set like the the, the hang loose sign. <laughs> the hang loose sign. Like this is beer. Oh yeah. This is normal drinks. Uh, I, I mistake food. normal drinks for fucking. We have like gas. That's it. Like yeah. we point at yeah. the gas. That's yeah, it. gas. And we all have that. Like, we never you see fucking, fucking like sheets or something. You're like. Sheets? Is that where we're at? Sheets fucks. Bro, we hit sheets up. You know about sheets? Yeah, yeah. I know. Where do they have sheets? PA. Dude, I've, I've Gotta been be around. Gotta be PA, right? Yeah, I just PA. didn't. I didn't know where else I used in to back country. In the, I, all I've ever had sheets was I had one in North Carolina and one in. That's where I had it at. North Carolina. And then uh, one in PA. It was the only food place. It was the only food place open. When we stopped on the way out here, you know my like, favorite he's food like, is. Oh sheets! I'm like, oh sheet! Hell yeah, dude! Oh sheets! <laughs> so one of my favorite spots on the it's more of an East Coast thing. I don't know if it's Northeast because uh, I haven't really Denny's. been up here. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Moe's Southwest Grill. I don't know if y'all had that. Oh, we got a Moe's in Grand Rapids, dude. It's, we got a Moe's. Moe's. Hi, welcome Moe's. <laughs> Moe's. Dude, every time you walk in, the motherfucker's like, ha, walk on Moe's. <laughs> fucking two minutes later, fucking somebody else, you're still standing in line. Ha, walk on Moe's. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we definitely ain't got Everybody's that trying to be like Chick-fil-A, right? But no, Moe's is like the best burrito joint, in my opinion. They do have like a fucking salsa bar. Fucking eight kinds of salsa they, right there. Dude, you know what? Everybody has Taco Bell, right? We can all agree yeah, on that. Yeah. So Taco Bell a long time ago did this thing called a, a griller, right? Where they like, it's like a, a, a regular tortilla shell, a hard shell in it, and then like all your shit, another hard shell, and then they wrap the tortilla shell around it with cheese and grill it. So it's like a, it's almost like a fucking Crunch hammer. Wrap. Crunch wrap. There, there you go. go. So they do their burritos like this. Like you can get a normal burrito or you can get a, uh, they call it a stack that way, but it's all like quality, air quotes, yeah, yeah. Uh, meat, rice, beans. Real like food. like you're, if you went to Chipotle and you got this shit, plus they have like real queso, not that gay ass shit they did. And then um, salsas, a lot of different types and like just flavor. Y'all yeah, don't have Freebirds up here at all, do you? No. So Freebirds is kind of like the Texas joint. It's like the... The combatant at Chipotle with oh, a little right. more flavor and we got like Chipotle option. and Qdoba. Qdoba's dope too. I like that place. Yeah. Chipotle's good, but it just doesn't have enough fucking options, man. In my opinion. Like, I don't know the options. I go through there, I'm like, they're like, do you want this, this is or what salsa? And I'm like, what's the options? <laughs> 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 like, I need a better menu, bro. Yeah. Dude, like, you're talking about food in the wrong place, too. Remember, these motherfuckers are going to chew you alive talking about food. Kudo while we're sitting in New York. York. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. You I've don't, seen. Like, what's the Mexican you, food like up here? 
I don't know. I've never had it. What's I don't even know. Do they like sell Mexican food in New Yeah, York? actually, Chris was saying there's a there's a Mexican place right by where we were so at. So, if you've never been to New York. I'm pretty hungry right you now, actually. literally, you roll down the road. What time is it? You're screwed, like dude. Delis yeah, you're screwed. Is it 1230? Delis and all that shit. And there ain't nothing, dude. There's nothing? Is there Cheetos anywhere? Dude, is there a Taco Bell down there? Right? Dude, can we go to Taco Bell for real? I'll <laughs> fuck that up right now. I don't know. I don't even know if there is a Taco Bell. The one. Scotty, get Seagull over here. Dude, it's far. There's no. Get him on the mic. Seagull. He's at least got to say something by the end of it. Yeah. We can wrap this up once he says hi. Seagull, come here real quick. Where's Taco Bell at? No, not you. Not you, young Michael. Not you, Michael. Seagull, give us a good Taco Bell. Which one? You want to go inside or you want to drive through? Well, you can't go inside anywhere around here, right? You can go inside. You got to talk in the mic, bro. You can go inside anywhere. Don't give us some New York shit, bro. Just fucking sit her down. Where's Taco Bell at? I heard you, like, rip bikes across the country and shit. A couple of times. Yeah, but a couple of times. There's no Taco Bell out west. Uh, <laughs> it's actually... Fuck, where's the Taco Bell? Because I can go through fucking... Yo, you know what they got rid of, though? They got rid of the fucking... Uh, Double Decker. No, the... The, the, uh, the cheesy fucking Fiesta the, potatoes, the bro. The stuff fajitas, bro. That's three things. It's a huge fucking From three different down. parts of the country but that we're all missing right now. But, <laughs> yeah, but it's a huge fucking light down. But, but they followed that up with like it's almost like a grilled cheese it's like a chicken grilled cheese. I just had it the other day. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was good. But uh Yeah, where is it? I don't really hang out Yo, in Freeport. I try is, not to hang out in Freeport. This no, is New York right here. here. Yeah. How far is one from Bigelow's? That's, that's he lives down the street, no, but this is right we're here. in a different there's city. Right here. Freeport, you yeah, don't, they here. don't fuck with Freeport. Yeah, they, they don't. They hate Freeport. Serious? Yeah, my buddy. No, uh, I don't hate Freeport. I yeah, you do. Freeport. You ask. I hate me. Billy Joel. I don't <laughs> like. That's the only thing about Long Island I don't like is Billy Joel. But Freeport's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you in the bikes? Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Billy Joel. <laughs> Strike me as a, a stone cold kind of guy, like a. Brian Bosworth. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, my neighbors rode motorcycles. Uh, yeah, they had one dude had a Nighthawk, but he was a heroin. He was awesome, man. I lived next, like, <laughs> seriously, I lived next to like Deadheads and Pink, and these dudes loved Pink Floyd. And when I remember when Jerry died, and my father was like, "What are you guys gonna do now?" And they're like, yeah, "We're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to grow up." And I was like, "Well, wait, this is kind of cool." And they moved out. They literally just fucking moved out. But they're like. Nighthawks and some choppers and fucking lifted dodges and all that shit and dude these guys were just smoking joints and fucking literally two pissed I'm like is that legal bro like, <laughs> like just yeah short shorts and pistols tucked in their shorts <laughs> that's some fucking Michigan shit no it's not yeah, Michigan not, shit yeah. dude it's not New York shit <laughs> fucking, yeah they just landed here bro yeah it's it literally yeah this guy had shorts like this big and but, uh, That's what got you in the bikes was <laughs> short, <laughs> short, short shorts and pistols. Yeah, short shorts and pistols. Yo, you see a dude in, in, on a Nighthawk with short shorts and pistols. You're like, I want that. Dude, Nighthawks used to rip, bro. <laughs> they got some power on those Fuck fucking yeah, things. They did. No, uh, Oceanside used to have a uh, Nathan's, and Nathan's bike night brought everybody from whatever club it was and, and whatever. And my mother used to drop me off when I was nine and she would go shopping and be like, I'll be right here. But I think she just stood like in the back and just kept an eye on me. And it was pretty fucking awesome that she did that. But then they had an awesome car night as well. But uh, yeah, there was choppers and everything. And it just, that was pretty sick. But I think they, there was one of these one night <laughs> and uh, they shut it down. Like literally True. there was, oh yeah. And some dude I work was like, oh, you lived in Oceanside. I was there one night. Everybody just started pulling guns and shooting. I was like, yeah. I was behind TJ Maxx smoking cigarettes. Like, yeah, I was like You're 10. Like nine. I was like 10. I swear to you, I was like 10 years old. I was like, I was smoking cigarettes behind TJ Maxx. I remember hearing the gunshots and the cops showed up and we were like, oh, yeah. We thought we were like, oh, fucking badass. We're Where's there. your mom at? Like, yeah. My mom's a TJ Maxx. She'll be right out. Like, <laughs> she's going to dump these fucking cigarettes. She's going to. Yeah. So you, you've you been here in New York your whole life? My whole life. For real. 
We just actually try to go crabbing. I try to bring these guys crabbing too. Yeah, it's fucking crab. Hold on, yeah. hold on. What? You can Google this shit. It's fucking crab season. How many crabs do we see? No. <laughs> Zero. Well, Zero fucking crab, Mike dude. Mikey caught a crab. Dude, it was. He how big was it? It was a, a hermit crab, or what was it? A, a pubic a, crab? A spider crab? It might as well have been a hermit crab. Yo, Mikey... Like you could put eyeballs on it and paint it any color you want. It was like a fucking hermit crab. I thought he got crabs from fucking Rivieras. Ah, <laughs> uh, he did. I thought y'all were going to some bar street down this... Down I thought you guys were going to Nautical Mile. There was a party boat that just landed, but it was like... I think they were all Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, were, they were angry. They were. Good looking women, but the, they all have mustaches. So <laughs> stay away. That's New York. It's just all the women got mustaches. Well, what was it like here, you know, like growing up here with the bike scene and like oh, you so, said? It was cool. Like I said, Nathan's was fucking cool. That was, that was the shit. We're going to owe you some fucking whiskey, dude. He, he nodded, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> well, we, also had, we also had the fucking, rich, you know what's awesome is with the divorce parties and the uh, the moving out parties, everybody would sell their big bear choppers and you'd get the, the SNSs out of them and shit like that. Yeah. Because everybody had them out here. It's like literally every single fucking person. That nautical mile that you just, like right here, like yeah. they all had those bullshit fucking choppers. Was the, uh, like the American chopper shit a big influence around oh, here or God. what? Yeah, dude, it weren't was, they like? It was. Where's where was their place at? I guess I never like really thought that like thinking of choppers East, East like Coast that. Thing, dude. That uh, choppers like that would be like New York City. Well, though. Orange County. No, it wasn't no, New York City. no, no, no. Yeah, I was gonna say that's not New York City. It that was, was the like, guy who made a lot of money, had a boat, went fishing, like fucked a neighbor's wife, and then had like big bear choppers. Like that, that just how it went. And when they when he got caught fucking the neighbor's wife, he would sell his chopper. Everybody's like. Yeah, because it was an SNS built with a Baker fucking yeah, yeah so it was like just, a one twenty four. Yeah, it was like a divorce party. Like, oh yeah, sell it all. Everybody's <laughs> getting these fucking awesome motors and shit. But it happened a lot, and a lot of these people though, unfortunately, are stuck with these bikes. It's like oh, I want thirteen grand. I'm like, dude, that thing's a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. But it's got a good motor, so yeah. So you do four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, like, oh, you're not going through. A div- Call me when you're going through a divorce. I'll give you three grand. Yeah. So what'd you get on like uh, like the bikes that you're on, like uh, the FXRs, Dynas, that, that type of shit? Oh shit. Uh, what was the uh, catalyst? Was it another shooting at TJ Maxx or? Were you doing <laughs> no, I don't it? think it was a shooting. Were you getting I a blowjob in the back? It could have been. At 10? I couldn't even get hard. <laughs> well, I had no pubes. It was just like, yeah, suck that thing until it does nothing. You know, like, yeah, TJ Maxx, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get some Pele Pele and, <laughs> and I ain't shooting nothing because I got nothing in my chambers. Uh, what the FXR shit? I don't even know. I could tell you a good story though. I had to drive to fucking South Jersey to tell the guy not to sell it to me. He okay. had no idea. Dude, I was talking to this guy through like text and email and shit. And then uh, my buddy's like, take a ride. So I'm like, oh, fuck it. No cash, nothing. I went down there. I'm like, don't sell this, I'll be back there tomorrow. He's like, what the fuck did you come here for? You could have, <laughs> I, got, I called you 10 fucking times, you never answered your phone. The next day I went with cash, I got my FXR, so that was like 2009 or some bullshit. Uh, so we went down with a trailer, it was awesome, and then I fucked it all up. <laughs> that was it, it was awesome. It had an all in paint kit, uh, shitty drags, everything was shit, but Mid- the paint. Midwest FXR, dude. Dude, it was shit. But the paint was mint. It had the scallop paint job. And then, uh. Was the FX, I mean, a, a, a Ness paint job? Yeah, oh, yeah. The, Damn. That's what they said. Anyways, I was like, I believe it. I don't give a fuck. I was like, I just wanted it. And then, uh. What did I do after that? I, I crashed it. Yeah, that sounds about <laughs> right. I you, crashed it. I painted it. Hold on, hold on. You gotta tell him. You gotta tell him. You got this whole, like, thing. Crash to crash miles, to miles ratio. ratio. Yeah. So he's got, like,. He yeah he's you're got on a, par bro you got you got a crash to miles ratio you're on par how many how many miles do you have to crashes I've probably I've done I've done about eighty five thousand miles on motorcycles how many crashes and I've done two that's good he's got a good ratio yeah, you've, that's it yeah you're good 
just know. So you have two crashes in eight. That it's one every forty thousand. Next forty thousand, expect another crash. I'm just telling you. I have the <laughs> same had a kit. solid fucking summer, dude. The shit's fucking rolling <laughs> no, up. No, but like if you have if right. So it's like if you have more crashes, like so you're good for like longer. I don't know if it, like it'll be like you know they'll I'm look back until like May. I don't know if the crash gods will be like, yo, listen, this guy's got this many miles, this many crashes. Like, let him slide another year. But my miles to crash rate is spot on. Because I told him, I'm like, I've been riding to the city for fucking, for a long time. And he I've lives, had some fender benders. He lives out here and he he works. Lives in he, Long Island. And he used to work in... Well, Speaking about Long Island, Queens is Long Island and Brooklyn's Long Island. Don't get him started on this shit. So yeah, even if you live, I don't in, know New York. You can get me started. Let's go, right, bro. But it's a whole island. He it's, lives. And his, how long is? Sounds the like island? it's a Long Island. It's the most. <laughs> it is the most longest it's the, island. It's the longest contiguous <laughs> island on the United States. In the United States. Uh, say it ain't touching. And shit. people say I live on island. Long Island. They live in Long Island. Like, but I say too, I'm on Long Island. But. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of like saying, like, I want unsweet tea or iced tea. Think about it. You don't take the sugar out of the tweet to unsweeten it. Right. It's the same yeah. fucking shit. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, live all along out. Like, no, you live in it. You live all right. So how about this? Right. How about this? The <laughs> trip you guys took from the city to here, yeah. 30 miles, whatever it was, uh-huh. he did that every day. Every day. Back For like and a forth. decade. And then I got not once, but twice. And it's like. How are you not just like. It sucks. Oh, get home. You, you get home. You're tired, especially in rush hour. Like you'll be splitting lanes the whole time because you literally and, will. Split and actually, the whole like, fucking time today probably wasn't oh, as bad as like what it normally I is. I think we rolled up on an accident because as we were splitting lanes, we were like rolling next to like those black uh, cop cars. Uh, yeah, but they're just stuck uh, in traffic. No, they were run. They were riding the right shoulder, and we were like, Damn. "Oh, that, no, that's because that, they tried." Those are all marked, and they're getting home before. They, that's yeah, so they were riding. Yeah. The, they were on the right shoulder, and we're fucking splitting lanes, pretty much right next to them. We're like, well, don't, if you don't give a fuck, they, I don't give. They a don't fuck give a shit. Them. They're going home. Yeah, that's it. That's that's <laughs> what just, it is. They just throw on the blueberries and cherries, and it's that's like, it. See you later. It's fucking Friday, bro. Going home. They don't give a fuck. Most of the time, they're in traffic, and no one will let them around. Yeah, we because I know it's. A, you look at your watch. You go, oh, the guy's trying to go home. Fuck you. I'm trying yeah. to go home too. Yeah, I'm not moving over for you. I understand it. Just being around here, like I understand it. Like the traffic fucking sucks. It does. So it's been light know. lately. Oh, I bet. You know, I love the coronavirus. It shit. makes yeah, it's, it's fucking it's a dream <laughs> for traffic. But I'm glad I don't have to go too far anymore to work. But yeah. So what, uh, what's your crash ratio? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Is that some hardcore? <laughs> uh, I just think of how many miles. To, so like crash wise, it's one, two, a couple. <laughs> it's like a handful. And then this mile wise, you're like, oh, I'm well over fucking 200,000 miles. It's like, yeah, it makes sense. You know what I mean? It's like. So you, you've, you've smashed across the country, like going to L.A. and all oh, yeah, that shit? Yeah, yeah. So what's it like being from here but seeing the rest of the country on a bike for you on those trips? That's oh, fucking... I, I heard that you're like... like one of, I prefer the cars over the deer. Without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. I fuck do. That, yeah. When everybody's like, oh, go upstate, it's great. I'm like, fuck that shit. Because... Once this, especially these guys, oh yeah, we rode at night through Pennsylvania. I'm like, you did what? Like, Dude. Are you not gonna catch me doing that? The sun's going down, I don't give a fuck. You call me a pussy, I'm pulling over. I'm not hitting a deer. I had a deer brush my arm once and it freaked me the fuck out. So fuck that shit. You could do whatever you want, not doing it. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Let's hold that was kind of bro. That was kind of like fuck. something I was thinking about the whole time because after you went down from the deer. Dude, the bitches are scared of me. It's scary. Once it starts Dude, to- it's sketchy as Dude, fuck. I already smacked one of their homies. Like, they're just coming out with fucking revenge yeah. at this point. Fuck it, not doing it. I don't give a shit. Yeah, once it, uh, once it, like, uh, once he got hit by the deer, it's like it started to hit close to home because, like, I haven't had any close friends start getting, you know, hit by deer, or hitting deer, if if it's that way or the other. But yeah, we it's, we it's hit sketchy, the Pennsylvania border borderline last night at like right at dark, basically. And a you little kept bit. going. We smashed we two hundred miles into yeah, it. We went. Yo, let me tell you something. If I was right here, like. 
fuck you see in the morning. Yo, yeah. so seriously, the, not yeah, doing it, especially the, through PA. It's bloodbath on the highway. The one good thing is, is <laughs> it what this year it wasn't, dude. Like they haven't been running right now, so like no, like they, for nor you. Normally, for normally you. we see like 30, 40 dead deer on the side of the road. Not only that, but you see just see the blood. Yeah. yeah. Arrivederci. Yeah. Yo, I'll tell you about. I wanted to meet the ball. <laughs> <laughs> she makes great meatballs. But no, like, when I was going through New York on my way to Laconia, like, I guess I didn't notice how many dead deer there was on the side of the road. But after I hit one and had knee surgery and I'm riding my start paying attention. car, I'm like, motherfucker, there's a lot of them. Well, going through the woods, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Smack, I'm like, I'm just like, oh God, they're coming out. Looking for some out. eyes yeah, or some shit, like, you know? Yeah, but it sucks because stuff Steve stuff hit him in the middle of the day. Oh, dude. Hey, so which I is hit, weird. Yeah. Was it I a baby? Hit, what? <laughs> His baby. It was you know what I'm saying? Like, it was did you kill fucking Bambi? I'm saying it wasn't like a full grown deer that knows. No, I'm not I didn't, that didn't have a street. rack on or anything. Like, whatever, but I think fucked me up. It cost me 20 Gs. But what I'm saying is, like, the mature deer know I'm not crossing that road right now. They go at night. It's like a baby would have been. Well, I hit one on my, uh, on my bike, and then, I don't know, four weeks later, I'm still healing up from that shit. Had knee surgery and shit, driving my car, fucking 85 degree day, 3 p.m. Boom, runs around in front of me, smoke one in my car too. I'm like, fuck these things. They're out to get you, bro. Yeah, dude. That's not a conspiracy anymore, it's a fucking actual theory. They're out to get you. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, I'd, I'd cars you could see. You know yeah. I mean? like, so I heard a story of you earlier, you fucking lane splitting cars while surfing. <laughs> Did this happen? It, yeah, it might have been. Yeah, it probably <laughs> happened Wasn't a couple a bright of times. <laughs> no, a lot of shit's not bright. Nothing's, it, what choice is bright? Besides changing a light bulb. But apparently, me, uh, riding at night in PA is like off the table. No, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I ain't riding at See, night. Right. Lane splitting cars, yeah. surfing. Yeah, yeah, fuck exactly. Em. It's a. Uh, I guess you could say it's a. Uh, it's a. A stupid decision, but yeah, right. So like, I'm okay with that because you can, see, like I said, you can see the cars, you can't see the fucking deer. You know, it's, you know Listen. what I'm saying? Like, I can see the danger in front of me. You don't see a deer. You still like, have can kind of uh, control of that. Yeah. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. No, yeah. you saw the roads out here and the people. No, he didn't have no control. Listen, that was the that was the weekend that we went out to. I want what, you, what was that bike show we went out east with Bobby? Oh, that was some bullshit. I know you're talking about. That was uh. Edster was with us. We had it was. I never well, they those, they yeah. didn't come back with us because we were ripping. But Bobby was on oh, yeah, the was, the white bike. The white. Uh, what the fuck was the name of that place? Dick, dick, fuck, butt <laughs> shit, whatever, whatever the fuck. Yeah, there's just they make cool bikes. I just don't remember the name. It was Listen, just like we're literally coming back into the city and fucking uh, Bobby Seeger's on the white. What, what do they it's call it? It's the that? one with the polar bear. The polar we'll bear. We'll call it the polar, polar express. Bear. Polar express. Polar fucking express. Yeah. Dude, I don't even think he calls it that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Hard, what we call Hardtail it. Chopper. It's Bobby, me, him, Chris, and someone else was with us. Anyways, Sean Carr. Sean Carr was Sean with Carr. us. That fucking pubic hair <laughs> hate. Bobby, Bobby's on the chopper in the shoulder of the road. We're ripping, dude, like splitting lanes. He's in the chopper on the shoulder of the road, like gravel kicking up everywhere, all this shit. He doesn't realize his fat tires. Like, yeah. And, <laughs> and then this motherfucker decides to just, like, hop up, start surfing his bike down white laning. Like, that white laning. That happened. And you know what, though? Where like, the fuck were you? We were coming from, we went out east and... Yeah, we we're in the southern state. Yeah. We were going through Hempstead, I think. Somewhere, I know exactly what you're talking somewhere about. Somewhere out this way, some some chopper show on like a Saturday or something. I had to stop short. I, I thought I was catching a bumper. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. It's hard to stop when you're standing on your motorcycle. <laughs> no hand control. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ended up, I ain't got none. Yeah. We ended up going it's to like, Coney Island. You, was, you, you took off yeah, and went I somewhere else. I had a wedding to go to, I think. Fucking weddings, bro. Let's get on that. Weddings. <laughs> say about fucking weddings, man. We talked about that. I came out to your wedding you already. Did. You yeah, did good, yeah. yeah, yeah I like see. that. You did good. <laughs> that was nice. You what about up. weddings? I, I, I was there. I was there. What oh, sucks yeah. about weddings? Oh God. <laughs> I love weddings, honestly. You play shout. 
The Isley Brothers shout at your wedding? I'm fucking there, bro. <laughs> I'm, Wait, I don't even shout. Shout. No, no, not Let that. It no, no, no. <laughs> I fucking like that song too. So. Hey, wait a minute. I think you want to really shout. Come here and I'm shouting. No, 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 no. That one. That shout. Well, in the South, we just play. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that's where we are. A little bit something now. I'm trying like, to see if I'm fucking you know, you know something like now. Just, yeah, no, uh, it's uh, Animal you, House. No, well, fucking, uh, what's the... Uh, Is it Wedding Singer? Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers, okay. dude. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> when all the titties, titties start popping yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, that's yeah, what, dude. yeah. Even before that, before that movie came out, I'm like, this is like the titty scene. Like, I knew, like, hey, and then it came out. I'm like, yeah, that's why I envisioned You're like, I said this shit 10 yeah, years ago, bro. Yeah, great. He thinks titties are just going to start popping out all yeah. over the place. Yeah, titties. At your own wedding, right? Yeah, yeah, same thing. Actually, oh no, <laughs> dude. That was on crutches. good story. Yeah, good story about his wedding. wedding. He, no, you were not only on crutches. You were on. You were. You were. You were. <laughs> yes. I was incapacitated. Hold on, he was on crutches because he got into a motorcycle accident. I wonder how. Yes, <laughs> surfing the southern state. Fucking. Yeah, I wish. Dude, no, he went down from something worse. Yeah, like he car. fucking hit a banana peel or yeah. something. You had a Mario Brothers. In the car. No, I'm no. just kidding. His <laughs> wife pulled him out in a radio flyer because he like literally like, like, you know, like now introducing, and she's like, "What are we gonna do?" I was like, uh, "I can't walk that fast." I, I had a rod put in my leg and shit. I was like, "Pull me out in a radio flyer." She's like, "All right." So literally, he comes out in a fucking radio flyer. And everyone's we like, can't, oh. We had kids hanging off the back and shit. She made the best of it. I drew a flame job on the side and all that shit. Yo, she was so <laughs> she was so pissed that he got into an accident <laughs> before weeks, before the weeks. wedding. Snap the fever made right the now. Fucking shit though. For for yeah. for us, it did. For her, she <laughs> exactly. wasn't happy, dude. Yeah, yeah the wedding photos look crazy with his fucking legs. Like, oh, uh, neither of us were happy. Yeah, I was not happy. I wasn't happy actually. They were like. I'm on the side of Long Island Expressway. Like, who can we call? I go, uh, you call my phone. And they go, you getting married? You married or? Yeah, I go, I'm getting married through. We'll call your fiance. Go, no, you won't. Please you, don't. I was like, you will not. And then finally got to the hospital. They're like, all right, we're going to put a rod in your leg and you'll be walking by tonight. I go, give me that phone. They go, hey, what's going on? And I was like, I'm going to switch to FaceTime. Start FaceTiming. She's like, what's going on? I was like, oh, not much. She's like, how do you have service? Because I was working in the tunnels on the Grand Central Station at the time. Mm -hmm. And I pan out. I go, actually, I'm in the hospital. I broke my femur. She's like, holy shit. I go, don't worry. I can dance our first dance. I'm going to be up on my legs tonight. That's all I needed to know. I was like, it was, you know, it's not my wedding. It's her wedding. So it's yeah. just, I needed to know that I'll be standing up and not in a wheelchair. And they're like, no, no, you'll be on your feet tonight, which was... We got the picture. It didn't work out, though. We got the picture. He's in a neck brace with, yeah. like, the thumbs up. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was, like, three nights later I was able to do it because that night I was just like, I think I'm still on fentanyl. <laughs> I was, like, bent in half. I'm like, how do you walk if your top wants to hit the... I was like, my head wants to be on the floor and my legs. And they're like, we're going to come back tomorrow. I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So, yeah, my wife's a trooper. But, yeah, I was on my at my wedding uh, in I'm a glad radio flyer. I had the accident because I lost a ton of weight. I got fitted for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I look good, man. Dude, I, when I got married, that was the worst part. Trying to fucking yeah. like, because all the pictures that are involved with I it, you're great. trying to like, fuck this. I, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, yeah, I know what you mean, man. I got fitted for that tuxedo. Like, I had a, I had a tuxedo made for me like three months earlier, and I was like, man, I'm getting made fat. And then when the tuxedo came, I was like. Holy shit, if I didn't have this accident, I would never have fit in this fucking thing. <laughs> Literally, the lady's like, this fits so good. I'm on like one crunch. I'm like, thank fucking God. Like, I'm so glad I got hit by a fucking car. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's I will just spit <laughs> my fucking <laughs> So you know what I do with the money if you get hit by a car? We put a dormer on the house, and now rooms even upstairs, so my hip fucking sucks, and so do my legs. So I have to walk up and down the stairs like twice a day, and I, I say to my wife, you like that dormer? Cool, because my fucking hip is killing me right now. I'm like, <laughs> but as long as you enjoy that room upstairs, that's all that fucking matters. Yeah, right? yeah. Because a uh, happy wife is a happy life. <laughs> and actually, the bike just got finished. This, not finished. Well, it got back on the road <laughs> this year for the FXR Jam. 
Oh, you were down there? Yeah. Yeah, for the first time. He's the one that got, got the, he's the one that pissed the owner off at the fucking hotel. <laughs> that was we, talked to, we talked about that on this podcast. Yeah, that was bullshit, dude. That was, <laughs> I fucking did a fucking six foot fucking skid. Are you, uh, this is my livelihood. Yeah, yeah I get it. Maria has gone out and shit. He's it was like, crazy. Day. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. came out in a, in, a, in a set of Tiva, like water, sh- like shoes. Like high shorts, a tucked in shirt, and a fucking piece on the side. I'm like, yo, all I went to was skid, bro. Like, I look like just hit the brakes a little too hard. I'm like, well, when he said that though, like, because I heard about the stories, I wasn't there when it actually took place, but when he was saying that shit, I was like, dude, this is the most you're ever gonna make in one night. With all these fucking bikes yeah. out here, yeah, well, you yeah. should have fucking had a fucking hot dog stand. Oh, he here. was Bro, pissed. Pop- he was first pissed. Off, this is my first time down there. I didn't know anybody, know the guy, so I apologize. And they're like, you don't have to apologize to me. Like, no, I do. Listen, I don't know you guys. I don't want to ruin your event or whatever. I'm like, I'm here and there. I'm a blip on the radar. It doesn't fucking matter. I want to apologize. And I went up to him three times, and finally I realized he doesn't give a fuck. He didn't want it to happen anyway. But when you're like, this is my livelihood, it's like, bro, you're fucking parking lot's a piece of shit you know what i mean like it's a skid mark and then the next day with the gun out i'm like oh. <laughs> bro i'm just gonna walk my bike in this thing and everybody's like oh that's how we met him too he gets kind of like yeah who was who upset. was saying that joe oh yeah joe, joe kid like, yo he's like scott i met him the same way bro and he's like he came fucking hooting and hollering at me and shit and i was like who the that's fuck? a pretty good joe kid actually he's like, yeah. he's like, yo, dude. He's like who the fuck is this guy and i go yeah, that's he goes. I seen that shit, bro. He's like, <laughs> same shit, no big deal. Just tell me. He's like, yo, I'm, I told him I'm sorry, and he's like, he doesn't give a fuck. So if you don't give a fuck, I don't. I did a skid. I didn't do a burnout. And the old man who actually he blamed the first time. I thought he was knocking the fuck out. Yeah, so like, he yo. he yelled at some like old yeah. dude on a bike. Like the dude was getting ready to leave. He went right up to him, got in his face, and the guy's like, the guy's like, dude's doing burnouts, and the guy's like, get the. Fuck fuck out of he was like 65 years old on his FX so I was like stock get the fuck out of my face before I knock you out and I'm like the fuck is going on around here and I'm like oh wait oh you're talking about me oh that was a fucking that wasn't a fucking burnout I skid for fucking this yeah. Yeah. yeah burnouts just like ruin things <laughs> What about skids? Skids, dude. <laughs> skids ruin SXR jams, man. No, I, I remember hearing, I think I was either, oh, I either oh, showed oh, up after. Oh, shit. Oh, boss hog. What are you, hog shit. Hog shit. He's like, yo, Scott, that was some hog shit. Hog shit. <laughs> That's Joe Kid's thing. <laughs> hog shit. I remember when I showed up, I immediately uh, saw you and um, and uh, Danny D. And I was like, what's up, what's up, blah, blah, blah. And then I saw Chris, Harry, and, uh, yeah. and Joe Kid and all them. And then I started hearing about this situation that took place. And then was situation? Like, yeah. Yeah, and it's just funny because, like, now I'm sitting here with a fucking culprit. <laughs> I'm the, yo, I'm the skid, I'm the skid man. That's yeah. it. I'm the skid mark in your underwear. I'll fucking, I'll ruin anything. I'll fucking Oh, wait, hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's back it up a little bit. A couple of years ago, uh, Thursday night, bike night, Hard Rock. You got us kicked out at the Hard Rock, too, here. Well, that was, was that last year. No, was, this was like that was easy to do though. That was, that was like, an old lady. Yeah, it was an old lady. That the was old like, lady looked like a man. Probably three years ago. <laughs> yeah, she did. She looked like my, actually she looked like my grandmother slash grandfather. Like if you could put them together, she had short hair and it, I think she was wearing a Sergio bikini, which is pretty fucking <laughs> bad. Yeah, she came fucking streaming. It's my fucking neighborhood. I go, nobody fucking lives here. We're, we're like fucking literally Times time Square. Like we're in time, nobody lives yeah. in fucking Times Square. Times Square at the Hard Rock, She's and like, they started ripping burnouts. What are you doing? Burnouts down my block. What are you fucking? She lived. She was. She lived on the street, but still, it's like, oh, okay, all right, makes sense. <laughs> I felt bad. I gave her a pound. It was a nice thing. Yeah, when you watch, you know, like this is my first time ever being in New York. When you watch every TV show that's ever based out of here. You feel like normal people live in the city, right? And then you're like, when you're here, you're like, how the fuck can anybody live over Nobody there on does. that island? Fucking assholes. <laughs> Nobody fucking does. Nobody from New York lives in the city. Yeah. That's. I guess it's almost like. Uh, I mean, where would it be for you guys? Uh, like, the people from Texas actually live in Austin. Uh, Californians live in Austin. They, exactly. There you yeah. go. Right. Ohio. You know. People from no, California, nobody, people nobody from lives Ohio, Ohio. and fucking into Manhattan. And, and even in Brooklyn, too. It's like Brooklyn people aren't. I mean, there's still people from Brooklyn in Brooklyn, but. Well, it hasn't like over the last like 
10, 15 years, like Brooklyn went from being like a place where you literally had to be like in a gang to now like it's, you know. Yeah, you're like a yoga gang or something. <laughs> <laughs> or like a vegan gang. Oh, you're not a straight edge gang? Oh, fuck, don't fuck with those vegan gangs. Like, it's the same shit. It's How was that like, because I mean, I, you gotta understand, like I said, my, I can't say I, my I nuance of this situation is, uh, is very like um, pop culture. Uh, how I, I grew up listening to you know rap music and um, you know hip hop and shit like that, and then you like grow up hearing like all these certain rappers from these certain like boroughs basically around here, and then like you you hear some people that live here now like I met at other places and, like nah Brooklyn's dope I'm, like isn't that where like all the hardcore rappers were in Queens and like Nas right. and Crees and all that's where it started yeah and then, all the like I grew up playing basketball so like. You know Coney Island with all like Stefan Marbury and, yeah. and and all these different people and no that's and, where that should happen yeah and then they were like oh you ever hear this term gentrification <laughs> oh we're gonna fucking gentrify the shit out of this yeah they're like oh this is this is ghetto oh this is cheap oh yeah watch this my lawyer husband and I we're gonna set up a fucking shop we're gonna tell all our friends about it. And everybody, and we're gonna come move into that's that's exactly what happens. So my question with with how that works is because for me and you know we can agree that like we've liked the gentrification in our cities, but our cities are fucking like a drop in the pond compared to what New York City is. So how is that for like locals here? Well, out here it doesn't happen. Well, it is happening. You want to know why it's happening? Because people are moving from the city out here, and it's driving out property value up. So I'm like. Keep coming, motherfuckers. You want to leave in these shithole fucking neighborhoods? And, like, and like everybody's like, oh, this shithole neighborhood's now, like, the, the most happening thing. I'm like, that's cool. Come out here. Pay me 200 over for what I paid for my house. And you can fucking live in my neighborhood. I don't give a shit. You know? Like, yeah. I'll go somewhere. I'll go to Michigan. No hey, offense. Let, I'll whoa, go to Michigan. Whoa, whoa. What do you mean? No, I'm saying I'll just move <laughs> out of here. I'll just move out of here. And I'll hang out with nice Brian. And are you, I don't tune my bike. Are you allowed to look, move somewhere like New Jersey or some shit? No. No, that's where we throw out trash. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually nice parts of Jersey, but like. But you're not allowed to, though. If you're from a borough here, you just. Well, the, the, like the. They call it the Italian like pilgrim so pilgrimage or whatever. So like you'll be you go from like Brooklyn, which is part of Long Island, whether people want to say it's not, <laughs> and you go to Staten Island and then you go to Jersey. That's like the that you you the Mecca is Jersey. So you go Brooklyn, Staten Island, Jersey. That's just okay. how it works. You like, ever notice that any person in New York has never said it's New Jersey, it's always Jersey. Just fucking oh yeah. It's fucking think, Jersey. I don't think I've ever called it New Jersey. It's like old Jersey. It's like, it's just like. That shit's been around since I've been born, bro. Fucking, yeah, it's just. I yeah, mean, I, people it, from Jersey, I like people from Jersey. But like, no, I would, I would go to PA. Like, I think I would skip just because. Just come to Michigan. Just because I don't be like, yeah, I'm from Jersey. It's like, I just, I'll just go to PA or I'll go to Maryland. I'll just. It's just a bridge to, from for New Yorkers to get to the rest of the country, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's why it was, it was kind of weird because, like, thinking about the way that, like, these kind of shitty neighborhoods get turned around in our places where we live, it's, it's kind of, like, ideal because, you know, it's just kind of more like, it's almost like people of our same age group decides to, uh, or the, their, their daddies have money or whatever the fuck may, may be. But then when you see, like, Brooklyn, like, and now that I'm here, now that I see how big Brooklyn is and how big Queens is, like... I thought this shit was this. Now, Queens is tremendous. Wait until you see it tomorrow, dude. Yeah. Like when you see all the people at like, the block party. Shit. Yeah. But when you see all the people at the block party, like the people that come in, you're gonna see a bunch of people from all over the place, and then you're gonna see like the locals, I guess, walking around. You're gonna be like, damn, what the fuck, like. Well, Queens is Queens is probably the most diverse place in the world. In yeah. the world, the amount of like different nationalities and shit. It's. There's every one of them. It's every single fucking one of them. You can't compare. Queens is off the mat. But Queens as well, you could live, I mean, even in a shitty fucking area of Queens, they're asking top dog because, like, you're close to the city, you're close to the subway, you're close to the bus line. Yeah. But now with what's going on, everybody's just like, fuck, Queens is cool, but I'm willing to go a little bit further. And, I'll, and that's why we're like, come on out, spend your money. 
literally it's like bathe me in the money you could have my fucking house you know I'm, like something like this is going for more than you even think about because everybody wants to get out yeah you know they thought queens was the fucking place to go, which it is it's a true melting pot. Is there not the weird feeling of like the idea of getting out of a big city to like funnel yourself down an island? Does that not make sense to you? It seems weird. Like, you know, Long Island right now, which gets to a point at the end of it, and like you want to move further down the island versus like. Well, dude, everyone gets so sick of the city, they want to go like further and yeah, further you can go out. Upstate, you can go to Jersey or whatever, or you can just go out east. It's yeah. Like, but if you go out east, you got to start taking the train. And, you know, it's just... So, you know, the rest of the country uh, heard that, like, when the COVID happened here, like, everybody was dropping, like, flies. Bullshit. My <laughs> wife works at a hospital. She's a respiratory therapist. Nobody's dropping flies. <laughs> yeah. I'll say it right now. And I, and I have a person Did you feel like you needed to quarantine, wait for us to quarantine for 14 days once we came to town? Never, for you to not once, no. And your wife is... My in fact, a respiratory, respiratory therapist. therapist. Therefore, we have this on record. <laughs> yeah. This shit's bullshit. COVID's over. Seagull, See you later. Seagull said it. I'm telling you now. I'm you now. I got a piss, but when we get, you guys, you know, talk so much as else. And, uh, <laughs> no, we're waiting on you. It's not because no, of the facts. This podcast I'm not trying to dodge yours. facts or whatever. Who's got those giant fucking shit? Those are yours? Those, giant those are mine. Bro. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> There's a marina down the block if you have to drop those things. <laughs> 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 yeah. New York people, that's though. Eagle, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, that's kind so of. So, how long have you known him? Uh, since I've been coming out here. Coming out here, you just met him, met him because the fucking random trip. Uh, it was it. Yeah, I came out here like like I said, man. I kind of started coming out here. Uh, I had a I had a dyno with like T bars before, like that was the whole in thing. I came out here with Fab Kevin the first time, and uh, we did like the chopper thing and Brooklyn Invitational and all that stuff. And that's basically when I met the first person I met was Danny D. Yep. Um, and then, which is that's rad because like I've only known Danny D because through you. Yeah. And now that he lives in Detroit and all that shit. Yeah. So, so like I, I met him, and then uh, and this was kind of like this was like before like social media was really it, it was there but it wasn't like throw a year at us uh it would have been ish <laughs> <laughs> what's that thing that I'm about to probably Jesus shit probably, probably, yeah. probably uh oh, four, well, four, four, well four. when I met them it would have been like no I came out here before that but when I met them it probably was like 2013 okay. 14 oh shit so not that long yeah yeah yep. okay we came out here before that, but like I said, it was like, it was different. Like most of the dudes that were going there were like chopper guys. Yeah. And like, even though I wasn't like a chopper guy at the time, I was still there with like chopper guys. And then as soon as like the, I mean, they had been doing the, you know, Dyna FXR thing for a while between him and Chris. And as soon as like, we were all in one area together and like, you, there was a bunch of people there, but you just still saw the bikes that you were kind of into. Like I said, I, I met Danny and then fucking him and Chris kind of followed behind that. Oh yeah. Let's uh, pause right here real quick. And then we'll pick this back up. I want to thank you guys for checking out this podcast. Uh, I want to thank Brian as well and the rest of the Michigan homies for the hospitality, allowing me to uh, crash their Airbnb and get this podcast recorded. Uh, thank you guys for checking it out. If you want to support this podcast, you can do so by checking out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Fast Life Garage. You can donate a dollar a month and that helps us do all this cool shit on this podcast. Also check out Dream Rise John on Instagram and teamdreamrise.com. Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram at PaintHuffer.com. Fast Life 25 saves you uh, 10% off at checkout. Thundermax EFI, my computer of choice. ShopTMax.com, say use Fast Life and save 10% off. Getting a little hit of myself there. Lex and Moto on Instagram. Lexin-Moto.com and Fast Life saves you 15% off. Check out their new stuff that's out now. It's uh, pretty badass. Can't wait to get my hands on one. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets, as always. 
SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com, Electric Lighting Co., and NAMS Custom Cycle Products.com. Fast or FL 2020 saves you shipping. We'll be back with the next podcast, which will be my good buddy, Tim O'Keefe. Ready to let that one go. Good times. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.